Greetings, adventurers. Welcome. I am the friendly neighborhood dungeon master, otherwise known as the FNDM, and this is Cold Hard Witch. Join us round the campfire. We have none other than uh, Lee playing Herrick the Cleric. We have Amy playing Fariel the Drogue. We have Flynn the Dwarf Flinger Fighter. Uh, played by Rodney. We have Zolvana, of course, uh, played by Madeline, who is our bard and chard. Uh, and then, of course, we have the Professor, played by Nathan, the bookish worm. And then last, but certainly never least, is Buddy, playing Xander, the wizard. Welcome, greetings, adventurers. Gather round the campfire. So when we last left our intrepid adventurers, they had walked into the town hall after having beheaded Maud, the sea hag in the cauldron caves, and walked themselves and then trepidatiously with a, what, what, what do we call the boat setup that we had? Like a trireme? Uh, a trireme. Tri trireme. Yeah. Trireme. Tri tri Free boats. So uh, taking the boats back across uh, the lake, back to uh, East Haven. They walked in to collect their rewards from Imdra, the town guard, uh, the, the captain of the guard, I should say, and uh, then began a impromptu tour of the East Haven town hall, having agreed to hand over the cauldron to the town of East Haven, which they would then use to try to feed the good people of Icewind Dale with its magical properties. So having had a, a good job and a pat on the back, they wandered through. And as they've wandered through, they discovered a rather ominous statue that had been left behind by a previous group of adventurers inside the town hall proper. Now this statue was shaped to look like the demon Atreyu who had, Atreyu? No, that's the horse. <laughs> Urtru, er, 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 I think you said. Yeah, yes. like er, er, uh, so. <laughs> 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 very different thing. Very the sad. boy oh, from man. Never Ending Story. Yeah, right. <laughs> hacked East Haven. It's, it's him trying to pull the horse. That's a very tragic statue. All right. Uh, but tied to the front of the statue, seemingly, was a woman in chains. And as the professor approached, even though it appeared that only the party could see this visage, she revealed herself to be the ghost of the White Lady, the Lady of Lac de Nacher. And she proceeded to unleash her horrifying visage on the rest of the party, which everyone has saved except dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 Fariel. So we are now going to go ahead and jump in to the East Haven Town Hall where Fariel will see if she can withstand the might of the horrifying visage Ooh. of the Lady of Lac de Nacher. Okay. So first and foremost, uh, Fariel. Take us off. Why don't you go ahead and roll me a wisdom save? Okay. Is this a charm effect? It is not a charm effect. Okay. Just making sure. No, no, no. I say you, you say that'd be a pretty good flex for you. Oh, I was oh gonna say. <laughs> I knew it. I was gonna say one. before you roll, don't be it. that one person. Oh no! I knew it. Oh, okay. I knew it when you guys rolled so well last week, and you were like, "Oh, we'll wait and let her roll." I was like, "Oh, here we go." Yeah. Can we yeah. just restart the stream and that goes away? Yeah. <laughs> we need to because look, Nate's frozen. Big old three. Big old three. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, with that happening, dear Lord. Whew. All right. So, uh, so you have failed the save, and tragically enough, you have failed the save by five or more. So as you get hit with this horrifying visage, you are frightened for one minute. On top of that, oh, each of you see her visibly yeah, age that was weird. by a decade. Oh, and so about that. Her, her, her lustrous red hair stays exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, that's true. As a yeah. drow, that's that's about like, by, by 10 years, so for an elf, that's like going it's a drop day in the to yesterday. Is that, is that how that goes? It's yeah. like she, yeah, she, yeah. Ga she gained a couple of days. Yeah, yeah, right. A day. Yeah. Most. She's got one crow's foot right here, just one. All right. So, I get. Right. Does, does her hair grow though? Is she suddenly like Crystal Gale from the '70s and it's puddled up on the floor? I uh, just like yeah, for like the for those ten years, she get like just ten years of hair growth like that. We're gonna have a tangled fight here in a moment. All right. So, uh, 
That being said, oh, holy friends, crap. Yeah, that that went just about as horribly wrong as it could have. I knew it. Uh, uh, we called it. it. We called it, though. You, That's hilarious. You, you got to <laughs> love the dice. All right. So, friends, with that being said uh, and some battle music being played, uh, let's go ahead and roll for initiative. Yeah. Oh, no. And Ferry always has advantage. So, just so you remember that. Not going to do much Ooh, good 18. when I'm frightened. I got, I got zero. Crow, Herrick. <laughs> I got a zero. Oh, I got a two. Oh, no. <laughs> we got two natural ones on that initiative. Ah. <laughs> Man, you guys are coming out like gangbusters right yes. now. Yes. Yeah. I also it's... did the thing where I forgot to click on myself before I rolled. So oh, that's okay. That's I'm not mad. I'm not mad. Three I... net ones in the first wow. three minutes. Just get them out early, guys. Just get yeah. them out. Yeah. No, seriously. Uh... This is so, yeah, that's this is where you want them, I guess. That that did not prove to be true last night. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, where's your womp, microphone? Womp. He's not. Oh, it's right. It's right here. Okay. Is it? Is it my quiet? <laughs> But right. You was a little bit. Yeah. All right, all right. Um... Oh, I don't see you, Fariel. Am I going crazy? I don't see you in the tracker. No, because I forgot to click on myself. I can roll again um, and just change the number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put yourself in there. I. It, not that it matters. I'm frightened for a full minute, guys. This is also true. <laughs> no, say. You can still. Well, you, you can, and you can still save at the end of every turn. That's also true. Right. Is that, is that true? Right. <laughs> right. Is it, um, so that's, you can, normally you can save on frightened every turn, right? Can she do that, or is that a? So for the horrifying visage, uh, you do in fact uh, you get to repeat your saving throw at the end of your turn, ending the frightened condition on a success. And I don't know why you just set me to zero because my initiative is twenty. Yeah, that whatever just happened to the turn order changed my initiative as well. Oh, it made me better. I've got one now. Awesome. <laughs> How bizarre. Okay. Uh, -na, yeah. Wait, no. Oh, I must have had. So, Xander, what was your initiative? 20. 20. Enter. There we go. And. Is Mine's else? right. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was 21. Aha. Yeah, this is the exciting part, ladies and gentlemen, is getting the turn orders right on. All right, so there we go. Lovely. Right. And in descending order, please and thank you. Brilliant. So, ladies and gentlemen, at the top of the order is Fariel. But as this fight begins, so the, the visage cracks off and everyone sort of shields their eyes as the scream reverberates. I don't know why they shield their eyes if the scream reverberates, but you know, it's one of those things. So as they sort of try to cover their face from this horrifying image, Fariel visibly shook to the bone by this creation. And then it's at this moment that you hear all of you a piercing scream coming from what would be the speaker's office. Imdra, her face goes like, white shouts out prudence as she goes ahead and heads down the hallway as she turns she says bard and she tosses from her hands something towards you zalvana zalvana go ahead and just roll me a dexterity uh, dexterity save okay uh, it's a grenade do, uh, I, have to, do yeah. I have to click on myself first or no Nope. No, you should just be able to go ahead and uh, on your sheet. Click it, click DM, it. DM, did you just change what layer you were displaying? I think, I think you did, because we can now see many other things. Yes. Unless you were meant to bring those shadows out. So, as she throws it and it goes across the room and Zilvana tries to catch it and sort of fumbles a little bit and it drops to the floor, she sees that it is, in fact, a tiny ocarina. Ooh. And Imdra... Hey, ocarina. <laughs> and goes, Imdra goes ahead and flees down the hallway and into the door, trying to go ahead and uh, find the, the source of the scream. And it's at this point that two shadowy figures emerge from the floor, flanking the ghost of the white lady. These shadows seem to flit back and forth as they sort of watch each and every one of you. Fairy Hell, it is your turn. You are currently frightened. Okay. 
Um, can you DM describe to me this staircase behind this shadow guy here? Yes, so this staircase here is actually a descending staircase that leads into the dungeons. So while you could <laughs> potentially like throw yourself down that staircase, um, th that would hurt a little bit coming from this side. Okay, right. so it's going down yes, from where so I am. Yes, it, so it starts here and goes down that way. Uh, so like you would be at the, at this this section right here is the deepest part of the stairs. Oh, so it goes up from where I am. Like, am I at the bottom of the staircase or the top of the staircase? You I'm would here? be, so this, so this, the top of the staircase is right here. Okay. And then and it descends down you. to what would be the, uh, if you look at the dungeon map, it's uh, the up to T6, which is where you are currently at, little friends of mine. Well, we can't see the up to T6. Oh, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough, fair yeah. enough. So uh, in the dungeon map, <laughs> that, that stone step there descends into the dungeon, this leading up to the first floor. Clear as mud? Yeah. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. I'm doing a great job. If you take If you take one step five foot north of where you are, you will fall yeah, into you're gonna the fall. stairs. Okay, so it's open. This, I'm looking down at a yes. staircase. Yeah, you're open. looking at a hole in the floor. Gotcha. That is, that is a staircase. Okay. And I will be filing a complaint with OSHA that there is not adequate railing. Oh, not even. Yeah, yeah. no. I'm going to say, hey, it's so that's favorite. prime Kevin McAllister real estate to attack burglars in your house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to hold something heavy over here and wait. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> okay. Got it. Um, I am. Let's see. Not really in a good position to hide. Yeah. So the frightened condition, friends, is that it gives you disadvantage on all of your ability checks and attack rolls while the source of your fear is within sight. And of course, the creature then can't willingly move closer to the source of its fear. So fairy elves between- Kind of uh, stuck. A shadow and a hard place. Yeah. Um, I guess I'll just take a swipe at this shadow here with my um, short sword. Excellent. You will do so at disadvantage. Which is control, right? Yes. To Double 13. That, that, okay. That, that's well. all right, though. Yeah, that that will mo. Oh, that'll hit. That, that'll all do. Right. That'll do. All right. So go ahead and roll your damage. All right. So 10 damage. All right. Excellent. And uh, this is your short sword. So this is going to be slashing damage. Um, piercing. Piercing, piercing damn with, with the short sword? That's what it says. What it says. Yeah. Wow. Bite, little, little bust my buttons. So <laughs> as you go ahead, Ooh, as you go ahead and take such language. swipe uh, across from the shadow, it, it, it seems to rip through it, but as it rips through it, it then starts to reform slightly as if uh, the damage itself just wasn't as effective as you thought I it was. I had a sneaking suspicion. Yeah, right, right. Hmm. right. All right, and then I will um, go, I guess I'm going to, mm, let me see. I think I will bonus action disengage from this guy Brilliant. and just move down to this corner by Flynn. I <laughs> good, can't good. really go anywhere else. <laughs> good, excellent. So now you can go ahead and roll your save. All right. Let's see. Nine. Which is a nine. nine. And not enough. Mm. All right. So up next is none other than Xander. <clears throat> uh, well, since uh, since this has just really kind of gone nowhere quickly, uh, I again will uh, I'll kind of size this, this shadow right here next to me, size him up a little bit. And I'm already on him, so I don't quickly move to him, but I will blade song. Um, Excellent. And just to remind you on that, uh, plus three to my AC, mm -hmm. speed increased by 10 feet, advantage on acrobatics, and a plus three bonus to any con saves made to maintain my concentration. Excellent. Okay. Uh, so let me mark that off and update my AC here. You're like and a swole spellcaster. Yeah, I'm a spellcaster with a 19 AC right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> um and then I will make an attack on this shadow here. Nice. Excellent. Um, to hit. 
Uh, that's going to be there a crit. There you go. Oh. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, Oof. coming out with the first critical hit of the evening is Xander Still Missed. All right, Xander. Uh, so, critical hits. How we do them in my games is you go ahead and run a maxed uh, critical hit die. And then on top of that, you can then roll the additional uh, D8. So your weapon damage is maxed out. So your D8 would be an eight. And then of course, plus the three is gonna be that. And then he rolls an additional eight. Is that an, an additional eight damage to that? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's he rolled a seven, got a three. I'm sorry, I rolled a seven. And then he's got the okay, eight. okay, so it's okay. Still exactly the same. Even so it's, still, that is it's a a total seven. of eighteen magical piercings. Yes. That is beefy. Okay, so with that eighteen magical piercing, uh, that shadow literally just goes. He slices through it and he just and dissipates. It's gone. Oh, sweet. Nice. nice. One shot it. And just, yeah, and just to prove to you that it is actually gone. So go ahead. <laughs> there it goes. Nice oh, shot. thank you. Xander Funny, never believes you. me until I X him. So, <laughs> you know, it's, sometimes you, you do some trifling things. I mean, it's true. It's true. Um, I, I and I, I mm, I'm going to stay here. Uh, I, I think that's the end of my turn. Brilliant. Thank you. All right, then. Up next is Flynn, the door flinger fighter. Ha ha. All right, I have a question. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I have an answer. Let's see if they match. Um, is she only occupying this square right here? Or like, because the, the, the statue seems to be sitting on this line. Fair Spending. enough. <laughs> I would say that the statue sort of, uh, it rather cheatily seems, to, I would say the statue occupies the box behind it and that she's in that box in front. Gotcha. Okay. Um, well, then that kind of. I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run up, uh, Kitty Corner, the professor here. Okay, that's good. He needs help. Um, or maybe I don't know. Says who? <laughs> <laughs> How dare and, you? Uh, um, as I'm running over there, I'm gonna pull out both my rapiers, and this first attack is gonna be on the ghost lady. Okay. With the nope, no, it's not. <laughs> oh no it is but yeah so so Flynn just Jeez. rolled a critical fail on that uh, so as he goes ahead and like he does that thing where he tries to pull his rapier out of the sheet to get that slice going and it just kind of catches a little bit on the lip and, and it just doesn't quite so like the, the slice comes a little bit later and the ghost easily just sort of fades away and fades back well that's embarrassing yeah no it was <laughs> Especially right in front of the professor. He's visibly laughing at you right now. Oh, come to help me, have you? Hi, do, you know, <laughs> You're doing great, bud. I'm great. Hero. Yeah. All right, Flynn, what else you got? That is... Uh, you, oh, you know what? I'm going to uh, use um, a recovery so I can get back one of my psionic die. So I'm going to uh, do that. Brilliant. Okay. So you decide to take this moment, center yourself, be like, you got this, Flynn. You got this. Don't want to break it down. You got this. All right, good. No, I like it. I like it. <laughs> Brilliant. All right. Is that the end of your turn? Yes, it is. All right. So we go to Zolvana. Zolvana, at your feet is an ocarina. Do you wish to pick it up? Um, it's a free action. You can totally pick it up. Yeah. It's a, it's a tiny ocarina? clay flute. It's a tiny it's, clay flute. It is a tiny yeah. clay flute. Those of you who've played uh, Legend of Zelda all know and love the ocarina of time. But this is a tiny little pan flute, which I will show. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, wait. It plays just like that. Uh, let's go ahead and <laughs> pull out the magic items. So... Does Nate have one? Is he going to get one now? I'm sure he actually, you know what? <laughs> about I wouldn't doubt for a second for that us. he does. Just because he is that kind of cool. He's running around the house. Where is it? <laughs> Say, where's my arena? Where's my arena? <laughs> what have you done with my super Where? soldier? Yeah. <laughs> No ocarina. Uh, Nate, you've disappointed. Now we're all disappointed. <laughs> no, wait, I've got it. Hold on. Oh, oh, no. oh. <laughs> oh. You can't see it. Hold it up. That's it. Here you go. It looks like a whale. <laughs> it does. <laughs> oh, They're my fun. gosh. So good. I want to play a little whale. <laughs> a little whale. All right. So um, uh, you go ahead. And yes. You have the ocarina. I, I am gonna, I'm going to pick that ocarina up. And I'm going to be like, does this mean she wants me to play it? I'm and I'm gonna, well. So went ahead and just, 
I, I think I just showed it to everybody. Is it currently on your maps? Yep. Yes. Lovely. So this is the Ocarina of hey. Inspiration. It's a beautifully carved instrument of wood. And you can go ahead and uh, use a performance check to play it once per day. If successful, the soothing tones grant up to three allies you hear within 30 feet one, uh, a D6 Bardic Inspiration die. Nice. Cool. I didn't know you had. You should have just said you had a picture of it. I wouldn't have ran around my house. Oh well, no, no. The, actually, that was that was part <laughs> that of the fun was, of it. It was worth it. I'm gonna wait specifically until Nate starts running around his house. Then be like, by the way, I have a picture of this. But perfect. Um, Within yeah. 30 feet, that would be all of us would be able to get that. I say, but uh, only th up to three. Oh, oh, up to three within yeah. 30 feet. Gotcha. Yeah. I'm, sorry, I'm not breaking the game here. <laughs> yeah. Um. But so, but that's but that's something you have now. You can either play with your new toy or do your bardy thing and try to help out your friends. Um, can I use that as a bonus action at all, or is that like that would be my main action? It is. It is an action to use it. Okay. Um. Oh man. <laughs> I guess I should I should give bardic inspiration, even though I want to go cut some people. Um. <laughs> <laughs> your your own bardic inspiration is a bonus action. Yeah, your own bardic inspiration is a bo is a bonus action. So you can give out one to somebody and then still go cut somebody. Oh. Or you could give out one and then play the flute and give out three more. But Ooh. you can only play the flute once a day. So That's true. Right. Well, actually let me Am I Sorry. I can't remember if I have any bardic inspiration actually left to give. Oh, well then. That certainly simplifies things, doesn't it? Where do I check that at? Dang it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so bad at this. No, no, you're okay, you're okay. It should be under, so since it's a bonus action, you should be able to be able to click on your bonus action tab and see how many bardic inspirations you have left. I only have <laughs> one, I have one bardic inspiration. Okay, yeah, and judging by the <gasps> face you just made. <laughs> I have one bardic inspiration left and only one like, you know, like fairy fire or something like that to do. Before oh. a long rest. So, so it sounds like you guys might want to try to do a long rest before you, you know, get killed. Yeah. So, um, I mean, after you kill this ghost. So I'm going to, I, well, I'm going to try and slash a bitch first. And then <laughs> I'm going to. I love it. Okay. So, give you some inspiration. <laughs> so, you're going to move up into the space in between Flynn and I'm the gonna, Professor? I'm going to go to the shadow. I oh, think I, I think okay. I can go to the shadow. One, two, three. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so absolutely. You go, so, if you go one, two, or one, two, three. Yes, yes. That would keep you out of that uh, that AOE range for the ghost. And then I'm I'm gonna use I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some stuff. Do, um. do some stuff then. Do it. <laughs> do you want to do it? <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna use my rapier ah, and raspier. and you know do some attack with some stuff. Oof. Attack. However, a seven. And I won't do anything. Okay, cool. However, cool. a seven, better than Flynn's six, <laughs> uh, uh, it just does, doesn't quite, uh, both of you seem to have a little bit of like butterfingers as you kind of try to pull the thing out. It's just, it's, it's not a smooth transition. Yeah. So the ghost, or the, the shadow in this fact just sort of fades in and fades out and standing right there in front of you. Uh, anything else, Zolvana? <sighs> um... Bonus action, bonus action, bonus action. Um, <laughs> um, well, no, no, because like the only thing else I could do would be to throw a dagger and I'm too close to throw a dagger, right? <laughs> so, uh, I mean, you, you could throw the dagger, but it, you could it's also- It's a disadvantage. It's a disadvantage because you are within melee range. Exactly, yeah. So, never mind. I'm done. All right, all right. And so now it is the ghost's turn. The ghost turns her cold eyes towards Flynn. Flynn, I need you to make a charisma saving throw. Oh, Ooh. I don't want to. Oh, crap. I should have gave bot against I'm sorry. It's all right. Choices and consequences. Yeah, I know. All right, here we go. Oh. This could be bad news. Oh, 18. Ooh. Yay. Oh, well man. Done. Well played. So as the you way see, that thing bounced across the board, I was not happy so, with that. <laughs> so the ghost goes ahead and locks eyes with Flynn and sort of reaches out as her tendrils sort of seem to seep into his mind, her fingers elongate, and he's just like, <laughs> shakes her off. He's like, what are you coming on to me? You yeah. <laughs> <laughs> say, and he, he shrugs off what appeared to be the possession by the ghost. 
that. Wow, that was the ghost. That was the ghost shot. All right, so uh, now the shadow is going to go. Shadow is going to go ahead and reach out, and as Zelvana attacked it, it will reach out and attack Zelvana. Mm -hmm. So as it does, it's. What happened to the turn order? Strength it reset. Drain. Ooh, with will it? Uh, will, uh, 22 uh, will definitely hit. And so as the shadow reaches out, it sort of takes its hand and plunges it into Zylvana's chest. Zylvana, you take... Oh, well, okay, you take seven damage. Ooh, and... I want to do something. Uh, I have a reaction for this. Oh, all right. I want to use uh, Protective Field um, only because... Uh, so with this, uh, I can use one die to um, reduce... 1d6 plus 1 damage? Are you kidding me? Oh. <laughs> Saucy. Okay, so you do the d6. Plus, okay. So, so plus 1, so 5. So he reduces the damage from that down to just 2 damage. However, Zolvana, you at feeling this cold pan reaching inside of your chest, your heart seems to freeze a little bit, and your strength mm -hmm. is drained by 3. Uh. So your permanent strength score is now down three points. Like forever? Uh, we'll deal with that later. That currently, is. yes. <laughs> we could go into the, the sort of the, the, the nitty gritty of it in the middle of the fight. However, uh, it is now going to be whoa, shibaha, baha, shadow, shadow, and professor. I believe it's your turn. Hey, I'm gonna scooch past Flynn here. And say you're doing great, lad. Keep it up. And uh, <laughs> good job, good job. Uh, cast a uh, cast shillelagh on the way as a bonus action, and then take a shot at the shadow. All right, so five. No, so yeah, it's five. That's ten, fifteen. So yeah, good. You say on the other side of him. Go ahead and shoot your shot. Nice. Dirty oh, twenty. Good. Yeah, a dirty twenty will absolutely hit that shadow. Four, seven magical bludgeoning damage. Oof. Okay. As the as the as your shillelagh comes across the shadow, it, where as you saw the initial sort of swipe take damage from uh, the, the initial swipe from Fairyel cut and then sort of reform. This one seems to almost like baseball bat a chunk of shadow into the wall. It just crack and separates from it. Uh, we got to clean that up now. Yeah, right. It's like that basketball stain. <laughs> Get some club soda now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else, Professor? I am... No, I'm done. All right. Eric. Eric. Um, Herrick. okay. I... I think I'm just going to have to go all out. Uh, he's going to look at the white lady and... Um... Where is it? Uh, uh, where is it? I had it just now. There it is. And speak the words, uh, Herestvog, Herestvog, Herestvog. And I fire a guiding bolt at the bitch. Ooh. Got a hit first. Ooh, yeah, I... yeah. Do, 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 do I do it with advantage? Hey, inspirations are meant to be used. That's they true. Are indeed. Oh, lucky I did. 15. With a 15, that will, it will heat. So go ahead yeah. and uh, yeah, so that guiding bolt streaks across the space and lights up the white lady for, how much uh, How much of that juicy guiding radiant, oh good lord, 14, 14. radiant damage by that. Oh. That is that is beautiful. Not and, bad. Yeah, she, she did not like that at all. <laughs> No. So as that as that streaks across and hits her, boom! This sort of golden, sparkling energy seems to almost electrify across her as it sort of skates along her body, and she's literally luminously lit up for a moment. The next attack on her will have advantage, my friends. Ooh! So that being said, I believe. Uh, oh, sorry, Eric. Anything else? Um, no, he just raises his shield for the ready. Dang it! Almost enticing Love her it. to come oh, towards no. him. Oh, no. All right, uh, and I believe we're back at the top of the order now. Thank you very much, Manx. To I've got Xander, but is that right? It should be me. It should be no. It's I have a twenty. When it I have a twenty-one. That's right. That's it right. It should okay. be Fairyel because she has a twenty-one. 
and then it should be me. Uh, okay, thank you. I was sitting there going like, what? What is this? What is this witchery? It right. yeah, it reset itself. Oh well, that's helpful. The interwebs, friends. Yeah. All right. So, is that the interwebs or is that user error? I don't know. It looked I like mean, it reset because I was having a, issues with roll twenty. A little bit of column now, B. So. All right. So, Fariel, you are still yeah. frightened. Yeah. So. Um. But you've got inspiration now. You can use it. You yeah. do. I so say you got that D six. You can try. And to... there's a guiding bolt on her, which means I won't have to roll at disadvantage. It would just be a straight roll. Still, mm. still no sneak attack though. Yeah. Yeah. Still, still no sneak attack. attack. Well, no. it, but she's with uh, she's uh, uh, well, the party around. Oh, yeah, it doesn't matter. She's got a disadvantage. Yeah. She she it... has disadvantage. Oh, I, have disadvantage I see. From being frightened, you, you yeah. can't get yeah. sneak if you have disadvantage. Yes, yeah. yeah. Something... Even if you counteract that disadvantage, it still today. Your sneak attack. Today I learned. Yeah, yeah. right. Say, <laughs> uh, disadvantage and advantage, and the advantage is mm. the disadvantage of those disadvantages and those advantages. Meow. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay so that being said i am going to stay right where i am because because <laughs> i can't go any further i'm scared and um i am going to take a deep breath kind of you know try to steal myself pull an arrow out shaking a little bit i like it i like but it i'm gonna fire an arrow at this lady all right, so straight roll. It's going to be a natural 20. I'm calling it now. Oh. Ooh, it is, close. it is not, not a nat bad. 20, not but bad, it is though. certainly it's a 24. That is lovely, and that will hit as you fire at the ghost. So uh, go ahead and roll your damage. Nice. 10 damage. <laughs> nice. 10 damage. Well done. Now, as this arrow goes streaking towards the target, it hits. But as it sort of plunges into her, it seems to almost sort of slow and then stop and then sort of fade through her ghostly form as it drops and clatters to the floor. It looks like it hit her, but it doesn't seem to do as much damage as you had hoped. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Yeah, right? <laughs> I ain't got no magic. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm just gonna go and stay right where I am. Okay. Would you like to roll for your uh, yes. for your for your fear? You can do it. See if I. Well, D six. Oh, if you had any other D six inspiration right now, that might help. Oh. You know? yeah, <laughs> okay. I say you were so close. In fact, I dare say, if you roll your inspiration, you might just find your way out. Let us see. Wink. What happens? Uh, they all wink at the end of there. <laughs> Friendly neighborhood DM. Boink. And with a three, you do it. You manage to break your frightened condition. And Thanks, so you, Manx. Are, you are no longer terrified. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight, when you go to sleep, you can thank Manx. Be like, Thanks, Manx. Be like, no, no, no. It's when, it's when your husband turns around and says, Excuse me? I said, what? What? <laughs> what was that? Excuse me, what? <laughs> All right. Lovely. Mariel, anything else? Um, No. And then with I'm that, it's going to be like, <sighs> Okay. Love it. Xander, you're up. Well, having slain uh, that shadow. Uh, yeah, and, and feeling very empowered about that. Um, I'm going to move right up in amongst here. Wait, are you doing uh, modified flanking? Uh, so, yes, we are doing modified flanking in my game. Uh, the flanking in my game, if you have yourself and another member of your party, uh, a friendly character on the opposite end of an enemy, uh, directly opposite, you get a plus one to your attack rolls. So kind of like we are right now. Uh, most, uh, in fact, exactly mm, like you are right exactly now. Exactly like you are right now. <laughs> and Flynn would be able to use flanking on the white lady. Oh, I plan on this. <laughs> However, Zalvana and the professor would not, as they are currently catty corner and not direct flanking. But the crap professor, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to save all of the untoward jokes I could make there, and I'm just going to attack her. Uh, so it's, this is this is plus one on my to hit. Is that correct? Yeah, it's a plus one to your to hit roll. Uh, and Fairy, I'll get the advantage use, so I don't have advantage because yes, of guiding so, bolt. Yes, okay. so, so the guiding bolt is only a one time only. So That's that's all right. But hey, that was a good hit. So that's a 22 to hit. Ooh, that 22. What? Why did I not see it? In the there it is. There it is. Okay. So that 22 to hit will hit. Go ahead and roll your damage. Okay. So speaking of roll 20 being weird, it rolled the same exact roll 
twice on my desktop. So I knew it before you did, but then it rolled it again. That's madness. And, so, it's, a, and it's a 21 now. Yeah, and, and I got a 21 on mine, so. Uh, yeah, um, with, so, but, but plus one. 21 plus one oh, is 22. I got you. Oh, because you of the were, flank. You were mathing. You, Bec- I was, because of the All flank. Right. Got it. All right, so five magical piercers. Five magical piercers is what she will take, and she certainly does. It seems how she sort of like, as as your blade passes through her, she <sighs> seems to cry a little bit. But all of you having passed that frightens check, I say it falls on your dead ears. As she screams, I'm gonna say, you know, and we seanced you and tried to help you out. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, and that's me. That's and that's Xander. Lovely, excellent. Flynn, door flinger, you are up. Yep, I'm gonna make use of this uh, tactical advantage right here and go to go, go to. for my first rapier attack if it hits. Twenty one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. really hit. Roll that damage. All right. Well, so it's actually a twenty two, but yes. That, that's true. That's true. The twenty two. So, say with ten piercing. All right. Here's my second one. Going back to the second strike. All right, second strike is an 18, a 19 nice. with flanking, so that will hit. All right, and I'm going to burn an action surge to oh, go for this a third time. You saucy, saucy. <laughs> All right, so let's see here. That's I'm gonna, 20, 21. 20 hit. Nice. All right, hit. so so uh, All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start tallying this stuff up. Hang on here. All right, so we've got. So it's 23. Yeah, on his damage. Three damage. And for that last hit, um, I'm gonna throw on a psionic strike at the end of that. I'm sorry, did he do 23 damage? Oh, okay, okay. Yes. I'm, I'm hearing you what you're saying. Non non-magical rapier damage. Yes. But yes. yes. Yeesh. All right then. Oof. And then and is that three more force? Uh three psychic uh psychic damage. All right. Psychic three, damage. 14 total. Whew. Goodness gracious. So, so like as as you see Flynn, like, just w- literally wailing away at this wailing woman, fuck, she fuck, is, fuck. so it's just like, whoosh, whoosh, and like little pieces of her uh, is almost like her, her, her solidity seems to just fade a little more and more. She starts to get less and less substantial in front of you, but she's still standing there. And as she finishes, her eyes glowing cold blue, she comes to full stance and just glares at Flynn. You are flirting with me. <laughs> Brilliant. All right. And with that, Zolvana, you are up. Jeez. Uh, oh, jeez. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> now that I'm here, I'm like, uh, I probably should stab people. But like, I should I cast Fairy Fire? Guys, I need help. <laughs> She's close enough to being dead, it, it seems like. You might want to hold on to that. I would yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, say. Fairy, um, fairy fire, I believe, would affect all of us. You can that's choose. True. That's true. And can fairy, you fire is, fairy fire is also a fantastic ability when you cannot see your opponents or you... Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> so can I cast... Oh, crap. I don't know what to do. I don't know what's best. <laughs> um, crap. <laughs> well, so think about it, Zalvana, in terms of like, do you want to go ahead and try to, uh, it's always best to focus fire on one target as opposed to try to spread it out among many targets. Um, and then knowing that everyone in the party is pr- is doing pretty well on health, like the assist may not necessarily be the best option, but... Uh, yeah. You and you yourself can can lay down some pretty good ouchies. So well, if I actually hit someone. Well, and, and that the <sighs> dice tell a story. I know. Um, okay, let me let me let me just try and go after the shadow dude again. Do it with my damn rapier. Be like, okay, let's try this again. Hopefully, butterfingers won't happen. Hopefully. Oh, a 23 is certainly not a Butterfingers, you cone, you cone stowed? Stone cold killer. All right, go ahead and roll your damage. Nice. And so uh, as you go ahead and take your rapier and pierce like the ghost tries to sort of form itself, no, sorry, the ghost, the shadow, tries to form itself around the blade, but it seems to flicker out of reality and then 
and disappear. Yay! Well done. <laughs> Oh, um, I'm I'm done. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, that, yeah, you, you, you done real good. You done real good. <laughs> All right then. So with that, the ghost for the second time is going to go ahead and lock eyes with Flynn. Flynn. So I assume she oh, made oh, a re oh, she made oh, a recharge. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. I say someone's uh, throwing some meta at me, so I'm gonna go ahead and. Uh, Roll, oh, no, didn't make the recharge. So rather than uh, trying to go ahead and, so, but I'm gonna say, as she locks eyes with Flynn, she's gonna go ahead and reach out and touch someone. So she rolls a 16 to hit. Flynn, does that hit you? That is my AC. Oh, so we off. have a contest. Yes. So roll off. Give me a d20. I'll give a d20 and we'll see who lives. I mean, oh. wins. <laughs> Ooh, I rolled a six. No. Rolled a 17. <laughs> Yay. Yet again. So as the cold, elongated fingers seem to reach out towards Flynn. She tries <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Those of you watching, you see Flynn's sort of the brow of his head just seem to flicker with almost like a third eye has a very lupin quality to it. And it's like, as it flashes bright blue, it like her hand seems to recoil back as he's able to shrug off yet again, another attack from the ghost. Yeah. And with that, my friends, we go to, since all my shadows are dead, um, the professor. Oh, I'll, uh, I've got the shillelagh burning. I'm just gonna spin and <laughs> turn on the ghost. That sounds like a country song. Oh, <laughs> never. Got my shillelagh burning. Uh, you know what? I've got some spell slots to burn. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hex this ghost. All right hex then. This witch. So, hex this witch. with the hex. Yes. Uh, uh, let me display that whole thing. D D D D. All right. Okay. Um. Okay. Um, as you go ahead and reach out and try to place this hex on her, she, she looks at you almost just dead in the eye from her dead eye, and it doesn't even blink. Great. I'm going to try to hit her. <laughs> I'm going to try to hit her. Uh, 11? 11 is the armor class. Give me a d20 roll off. We, we need a music, like a, like uh, a sound bite drop for the okay. roll off. Yeah, right. Blah, blah, blah. Man, uh, that's with, right. With my six to his nine, <laughs> I say that that attack goes through. Go ahead and roll your damage on your shillelagh. All right. So nine plus the, what was it? A four for the hex? Yeah. Again, but the so the hex seemed to have no effect on her. The hex had no effect. The hex had no effect. Okay. Hex to that. All right. So, uh, but with that nine, that is certainly enough. As you go ahead and bring the shillelagh down, the ghost sees it coming. What is your final blow? Um, as she, I'm just going to just crack her over the head with it. And as she's fading, I'm just going to say, uh, go join your husband. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You're as cold as ice. <laughs> uh -huh. So as you see the shillelagh crack across her head and the professor's words echoing across the chamber, she seems to sink and then almost into the floor as if the floor itself were the waves of the lake calling her back. And as she fades into the floor, the room goes quiet and she is no more. Oh. And just so you guys can believe me, I'm gonna go ahead and put back on Yay. the not scary music. <laughs> well, don't do not do that quite yet because as, as soon as I am able, I'm running over here to where Indra heard the screams and disappeared too. I was wondering if any of y'all cared about that, but- Well, there... we had things to deal with. No, wait, no, I, I, I applaud you for- Third, staying. okay. I, I applaud you for staying focused. So, 
as those three creatures fade, uh, Xander goes ahead and busts, uh, goes to the door. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Standing on, well, I say standing in the room is Indra going at sort of uh, holding uh, Prudence as she's sort of in the corner, huddled and crying again. Out of her shoulder appears to be a icicle buried no. deep in her shoulder blade. And as you sort of turn Xander and look down on the floor, Cyril Holson on the floor has another icicle pierced through his chest. He is dead. Uh, Captain, is, 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 is every, everything? He was here. That bastard. He just came in. I, 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 Cyril was already dead and I, I I managed to save Prudence, but he just he just went through the bloody wall. Did Did you see him go through the wall? What did he look like? Uh, 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 dark hair, ponytail, the most bluest of eyes. He faded like nothing. It, it, it was like a gust of wind, and he went through. Damn spellcasters! Where were the rest of you? We were dealing. Did you not see the the ghost and the statue and the shadows? What? No. The, there was there was there was a lady dressed in white with long long hair chained to the statue and as soon as we approached she attacked and two shadows attacked and then you hear prudence in the corner oh god are we under attack it's like no no we are not i don't know what you're talking about i walked into that room same as you i didn't see any woman or specters or anything of the sort captain i assure you we were not given to to fighting things that aren't there we there, well, absol certainly... there absolutely were specters there. Well, I should certainly hope there was something that pulled your attention away. He, he went outside. He, if, if we could try to... I'm, I'm, I, I don't know what to do, Prudence. I'll are check you... her wounds. Is, she, is, is it... Uh, is it uh, how, how, how are her wounds? I want to check. Make a medicine check. Well, he's doing that. Uh, the professor has notably not followed and is busy. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm noticing that. Yeah. Busy so studying. I've got Fariel, this. Professor, Flynn, Zilvana, and I think Herrick, you're now into the, you're now into the room as well. Mm -hmm. um, but it looks like everyone else that I just mentioned, Flynn, Zilvana, Fariel, and the professor have not entered the room. Yes. How, right. how loud is uh, Imdra being right now? I mean, Imdra's being pretty, pretty bombastic. You guys can definitely sort of hear, Flynn and Zilvana can definitely hear what she's saying. Uh, Fariel and the professor, you hear that she is shouting. Maybe you catch a few words here and there. Fariel, I imagine you'd be a little more perceptive to that. Professor, I imagine you don't care at all what other people are shouting about. You're nope, probably... I am studying this statue. Yeah, that sounds about right. That's yeah, I wanted to take a look around to see if there was anything left behind excellent excellent yeah okay. that'd be if, if you could find some left behind pieces to show her that we were actually fighting yeah. that'd be great uh when she said he went through the wall did she point to a wall dm so she said that uh so she seems to point gesture over to this corner uh for that and it looks like herrick with an 11 on your uh medical check so your medicine check uh so um, i've got very... i've got inspiration i could use it that's the d6 one isn't it yeah you say you've got the d6 <clears throat> i'll use that um, 14. Okay, with a 14, you, you do notice that, th so, like, very clearly there is what appears to be not necessarily an ice pick, but an, a dagger made of ice. It, it looks very similar to, like, a Scottish dirk. has a triangular blade that comes to a very sharp point, and then the end of it is crafted sim with, a, with a grip, a, a little bit of a guard, and then a pommel on the end of it. Very, uh, someone who gives it a passing glance would just think, oh, ice pick but it's actually the shape of an ice dagger and it is buried up to the hilt in Prudence's shoulder. I, uh, I will put a cure wounds into her. Is she, I mean, is she unconscious or? So with that attack, it had dropped her down. She was very, uh, she, she was, she's within the, <laughs> the bottom sphere of her life, which mm. is not much. Um, so a cure wounds will certainly bring her back up to shape. Uh, so, uh, see, when, when Herrick pulls the dagger out, can I see it from where I am, DM? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Though, so as he goes ahead and puts his hand on it, it 
as it, it so are you pulling the dagger out here yeah as i would be here as you yeah. pull it out it seems to almost instantly melt in your hand as if like whatever was holding it together the cold that had persevered to keep it in solid form just melts and it seems to just sort of pour out of the wound and All right, I, now i'm gonna go ahead and jump to the professor and fariel hmm. professor fariel you are Currently, so Professor, are you looking for evidence of the ghost? Are you looking at the statue? What are you? Uh... I'm examining the statue to see if there's anything odd about it, or to see if there was anything that would have drawn an undead presence to the statue. Uh, things of that nature. Interesting. Okay, so go ahead and hmm. say that. Could be like. Roll me an Arcana check. Yeah. Twelve. A twelve. Okay. So, uh, with a twelve, uh, inspiration. Uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and use it. Actually, it's okay. worth it. Brings me up to a fifteen. Brings you up to a fifteen. Love it. All right. So, um, there is definitely. Thank you. So as you get close enough to the statue, there is a presence about it that is just unkind. Like it, where you find yourself sort of drawn close to this to be like, hmm, fascinating. Any other person would be almost sort of put off or, or, or almost like sort of pushed away by this. It, it doesn't feel good. It feels intrusive it feels icky so the statue itself sort of has this negative aura about it as you go ahead and look about um and and sort of uh, peer uh through it and then fariel are you also examining the statue or you're looking for so i'm not really i mean i guess i'm looking at the statue but i'm looking more for like evidence of the ghost like was this a spirit was this something else going on did she leave anything behind like um, you know, anything like that. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So, um, so the ghost Spectre itself, goo on the yeah. So the ghost floor itself or something faded into the floor, um, and so as it faded into the floor, it seemed to have the image of it like being pulled back down into the lake. As you saw, you can go ahead and uh, give me a investigation check. Okay, investigation. Ten. A ten. Okay. With a ten, like, there seems to be, uh, there's a a spot on the floor as if, like, a puddle of water was there. And clearly there's no, like, you look up and there's no hole in the ceiling. There's no, but there's, clearly it looks like someone had spilled water on the floor. Do I, do I have, like, a vial? I'm sure I have, like, an empty health potion vial or something on me. <laughs> Can I, like, kind of, like, try to scoop up some of that water? Yeah, no, you absolutely can. Go ahead, uh, make me a sleight of hand check to see if you can uh, try to scrape it up as it's sort of rapidly uh, evaporating. Twelve. Yeah, can you be able to get, like, a little bit of it? It's, like, it's like that little piddly amount in the bottom of, like, what is it, like, a pop can or anything like that? Okay. Pop can, Pop, what right. the hell is pop? Pop, I know, right? Northerner, I, weird. Them, a Yankee. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's all Coke. All yeah, of it. Right. Oh, right. please, yeah. anything but that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. It's, what do you want to drink? A Coke. What kind? I'll have a Sprite. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. A man no. who understands. I love it. I love it. <laughs> all right. So as you get just this little tiny amount of a uh, Coke in the bottom. Wait, no, that doesn't. Sound <laughs> <laughs> That's a different game. <laughs> Welcome to Cold Hard <laughs> Witch! You see snow everywhere! <laughs> nope, that's. <laughs> oh, Lord. All right, so, uh, yeah, so you're able to get just the tiniest amount uh, in, in your vial. All right. Uh, now, jumping back into. Well, actually, uh, Flynn, Zolvana, what, what, what are you two uh, fine folk doing in the hallway there? Um, I've got an idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, Rodney has an idea, everybody. Did you Hold see on. her? Oh Hold my on God. To your All right. Oh um, good, Rodney has an idea. 
Y'all remember when he flung meat at the wolves, right? Yep. Right. <laughs> um, so if so, if I heard right, that whoever assaulted them faded away through the through the walls. Yes, mm-hmm. you did. You did. I want to. I want to run to wherever the drug are we we got earlier is being held. Ooh. Okay, so then you know for a fact that the 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 drug, the, the Durgar Durgar. is as actually Durgar. down in the dungeon, or at least that's what Imdra said to you. So as you go ahead, you can head yourselves down this way, and if you go ahead and jump to, in the lower right corner of this larger map, we'll Ooh. take you down to uh, the dungeon map. Savannah, you, you want to come along? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly <laughs> so, what I was. So thinking. you hear you hear Imdra say like, "Just disappeared to the wall," and, and Flynn's like, ah, and bolts down the stairs. <laughs> Zolvana, you coming with him? I'm, I'm, I'm there-ish. Love it. I love it. So uh, as out. the two of you head down the stairs, we hear this. So I imagine you're not making any sort of attempts to be stealthy. No. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite no. answer as a DM to hear. No. <laughs> so as But you your dex come- built. So I am, you, but yeah. I'm also wearing uh, chain mail for a disadvantage against stealth checks. There we go. There we go. So as, as you come climbing down the stairs, <laughs> uh, two uh, of the guards, these these regard hunters, uh, come come out of the, what appears to be their barracks, a room off to the side. And, Who are you? What are you doing here? Is your Durgar dead? You is your Durgar dead? Is he dead? What? Is he still here? Your, the, your prisoner? Is he dead or is he st- still here? How do you know about the Durgar? I'm gonna I'm gonna run over to him. <laughs> like. <laughs> Who do you think captured him? We brought the Durgar, idiot. I love this. I love this. I love this image of like Flynn running through the, the prison, going Durgar, Durgar, are you here? Durgar. Durgar! <laughs> so uh, as Flynn starts to take off down the hallway, I guess. Uh, yeah. If there's guards over there, I'm gonna go over there. Okay. Uh, as as he starts to run down the hallway, uh, the guard in front is going to attempt to uh, grapple you <laughs> as you try to make your run down the hall. So, uh, Flynn, let's go ahead and have uh, an athletics roll off because that's that's fun. This. <laughs> You know, friends. Or you can choose acrobatics. Can I? Can I do acrobatics with this if I'm in a full sprint? You can. You can. Oh, absolutely. (laughs) Okay. I say yes. So, uh, in order to contest the grapple, you can go ahead and either use your acrobatics or your um, brain help. Uh, (laughs) Athletics. Acrobatics or athletics. That's the one. Uh, Please don't damage the guard. Yeah. (laughs) Don't want to. We're all out Um, of spell slots. Please, please don't. All right. Uh, okay, so his athletics roll is... It better be an 11. A 9. Oh, nice! <laughs> I only got roll? a 12 on that. A 12! <laughs> so, as, so, as he, so very similar to, like, Assassin's Creed. Rodney's just, like, running, 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 and then, like, the, the guard's like, hey! And tries to take a lunge for him, and he just, like, puts his hand out and just, like, <laughs> shoves the guard down to the floor. So that guard is now laying prone on the floor, <laughs> And the other guard was like, what? stop, you idiots. And it, so he starts coming on this way. Flynn, you are free to move away from that guard. Yay. Okay. <laughs> and as you sort of come down here, you see that these, these so these doors here are actually sort of barred doors. Um, so you can see through them. And you do see, uh, as you get to this corner, there is indeed a Durgar in the, in the corner of the room. And he's just sort of sitting there on his haunches with his arms on his uh, knees. Vasara spits. Gross. Okay, he's alive. <laughs> so a uh, point of point of order, DM. Since they're barred doors, can Zavanna talk to them? Mm. Uh, she, she <laughs> they're would, her people. Uh, yes, uh, she'll need to do it for a song, though. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> Wait, Bart. I'm trying. You're a bard. The doors have bars, so they are bard. But he's trying to come at me with all this punishment, and it's just not. Working. Oh my god! Hoisted <laughs> oh. um, on my own petard. Wow. Oh. So, um, as I'm just kind of like watching all of this, I'm just gonna kind of like <laughs> I imagine- keep through here a little bit and be like, "Hey, so can we just can we just talk?" And and I'm gonna like like use my little sparkly hands that I got to like get their attention. Be like, hey, hey guys, guys, hey, look over here. So we brought the Durgar in. 
<laughs> we are your friends. So as so as you do that, the, the the guard who goes to help his friend up, who's currently like face planted into the stone floor of the dungeon, is just like, "Who are you? Where are you people coming from?" The south mostly. <sighs> well, we were checking to see if the Durgar was still here because we just got attacked upstairs. Can you chill out? <laughs> what? Is everyone is everyone okay? I don't well, think so. Well, the speaker and, has had some damage. So. And we're going to go ahead and <laughs> jump to, speaking of, the speaker. So. so, DM, can I, since I saw Herrick pull the dagger out and it um, melted melted yes. in his hand, can I do, th did I see it long enough that I can do a perception check and compare it in my mind to the one that we took out of the other speaker, speaker, well, speaker Waylon? So, yeah. Uh, Is so it? Because it doesn't sound at all like the one you described to to me, the player, but I want to see if I can perception that. Yeah, go ahead and uh, roll me a perception. <laughs> Fuck Oof. me. Well, with a six, you're like, they l one looks like ice. <laughs> ice and cold. The, and the other looks like ice. Would I have <laughs> noticed actually pulling it out while I was tending her? So you did, I believe it was you and the professor uh, who made the medicine check initially yeah. on yeah. The Speaker Wayland. So you, yeah, uh, yeah with, with that medicine check of, I believe it was 14? 14. You, you, you would have noticed that the, unlike previously, the this one was snug to fit, didn't melt in your hand when you pulled it out, and didn't look anything like a ice dagger. It looked like an icic coal. Um, you said you said he went through through this wall, and I'm gonna point toward that wall, Captain. But and and so Indra is like currently like she's like she's got um, Prudence's hands in her hands. She's like, are you all right? Wait, what? You said he yes, went through yes, the wall yes, behind you. Yes, all right, I I wall. I'm gonna <clears throat> pardon me. Uh, I'm gonna head up here. I'm gonna open this door, and I'm gonna peer and see what I can see. Foot people footprints. Um, but I'm not right. gonna. I'm not gonna split the party by myself completely on my own. I was like, <laughs> do it. Do it. Uh, um. and, and and has more than a minute passed since the initial combat started? Yes. Yes. More okay. than a minute since, with in between the the healing and pulling out the dagger and the search of the professor and the the scuffle with the guards, like more than a minute has passed. Okay, I just need to know so I can let my blade song falls off. Yes. Yes. And uh, so. Uh, Xander, go ahead and roll me a survival check to see if you can see tracks or anything of the sort. Eleven. An eleven. Uh, you know what? I'm I'm going to spend my my inspiration die on that as well. Uh, this is uh, important. Uh, fourteen total. Fourteen total. With fourteen total, uh, there's nothing in the immediate area around. Uh, now, granted, like, you come out and you, in all of your wizardy, sword bardy glory, and a, a couple of the dozens of the town have, like, you know, their hoods up, and they're like, what? Oh, oh, oh. And they kind of, like, keep walking because the wind sort of whips around them in that perpetual darkness. But uh, with your with your elf eyes, you don't seem to see any obvious, like, if the person had jumped through the wall like you yourself as a spellcaster know that that means that, that there's some sort of either teleportation, which means they would have landed a distance away from the area, how far of a distance away, but within. Yeah. I mean, we, well, with one of my, you know, one of the innate abilities that I have my, uh, my once per day with that, I would know how far that is. I can just say it if you want me to say it. I mean, why don't you? Uh, so you know that I have face step once per day, which is basically misty step, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, which which you can teleport up to thirty feet. Yes. Away. Yeah. So I mean, can I judging by where all roll, of it kind of happened? Roll a perception check with advantage. Ooh. Perception with advantage how about a net 20 for 24 boom that is a beauty and will be exactly what you're looking for so while you don't see tracks or anything of the sort you sort of use your innate magical abilities to sit and go like wait i know what i'm looking for and then you that's when you see it with that crit 24 off in the distance 
30 feet away from the from the town hall is an impact spot which had started to be covered over by the snow and then almost and it's, it's right there in front of you as if someone had indeed misty stepped out of the building uh if i i have one more thing to do if i have action but we can also move to an, the, another section of the party if you if we need to do that as well we're going to jump right now to the professor so professor fariel I want to hmm. head down toward the Durgar. Excellent. So you professor, see, I know you have that mute on. I yeah. Know. So you, so you see the you so you see Fairy out. So Fairy out and the professor. You see Flynn like his eyes kind of go, oh, and he bolts down the steps. And then you very quickly hear like, "What are you doing down here? Oh, the Durgar, the Durgar!" And so like, and there's just like the sound of like metal hitting stone and someone of the wind getting knocked out of them. So. I so I just like quickly scoop that water in. That's probably <laughs> yeah. why I don't get very much. And then I'm going to follow. Exactly. Exactly. So Fariel heads down into the dungeon as well. The professor has pulled out one of the onyx looking darts that we found on the Durgar and is comparing the material of the dart to the statue. And he's like comparing them and like trying to scratch one on the other to see like if one material is stronger than the other. Just kind of experimenting interesting so um hmm. so uh you've broken the dm good job <laughs> <laughs> so because you're scratching them uh, i need you to make me a perception check 19 Excellent. With that 19, you can absolutely tell that they are uh, of the uh, of the same material. Um, but with your sort of scratching, do you touch the stone? Of the statue? Yeah. Yeah. Roll me a charisma save. Ooh, that's an eight. And I have none of... None of my inspiration left. So eight. Mm. So with that eight, you you feel in your mind that there's something sinister about this. And then your mind flashes to that emblem that you had found in the cave. Say, those of you who don't remember, there was a snowflake-like uh, uh, necklace that one of you had pulled from. Uh, the yeah, I, I have it in my inventory. Who, where did, where did the, where did the emblem come from? I say the emblem uh, was the, from, was from the pile of corpses uh, that was found inside the cauldron cave, inside the cavern, cauldron caverns. In the uh, frost giant skeletons in, room. Yeah, in the frost giant skeletons room. And it's at this moment that it clicks for you that the people in this town are the ones that have been getting killed there. But the people in the town have been wearing the symbol of the frost maiden, which means but there's secretly a cult that, that, that everyone in Ten Towns must be a part of. That, that's why all the sacrifices are happening. That's why all of these things seem to keep, everything seems to keep getting worse and worse. Why else? I mean, you, you know how a spell works. If the Frost Maiden was meant to be overthrown, surely some spellcasters would have worked around it. But no, it must be the very people of Ten Towns who are working with the Frost Maiden. And this paranoid idea just takes root at the very front of your mind. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> That's <Well>. cool. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. All right. Uh, so, and then let's go ahead and <laughs> jump back down to the... Um, uh, back to the dungeon, everybody. Ah, uh, Saturday nights. So, uh, as we go ahead and jump into the dungeon, we see that now Fariel has joined the group as Zolvana is trying her best to explain that, of course, we weren't trying to, like, break in and, and take um, the, the, the Jurgar prisoner. No, we don't, we don't want to take him. We just want to make sure he's still there. Ah, still here. I, I, it's at this point that like the last guard sort of comes out from the room and as like the four of you seem to, as the three of them and then the three of you seem to crowd around, it's like, oh, you daft idiots. These are them. 
And they'll cut the three in front of him kind of look back at him very stooge esque and he's just like it's them the adventurers the ones who claimed him they're the ones that these are the reason why we got him in the first place oh i should have time for this get out of my way <laughs> and, 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 and so they, they all tried it but it's the very small corridor so they're just kind of, uh, uh, and they kind of like push themselves up against the wall as what clears what appears to be the supervisor of this motley crew is at the front uh, i'm sorry did you did you say that there was some sort of attack going on upstairs? Yes, the speaker was stabbed. You should probably get up there. Oh my god. Uh, oh god. Uh, uh, Oren uh, and... Uh, what the hell's your name? Uh, Stevens, sir. Uh, Oren Stevens, upstairs, now! And so the two in front, the one who had face planted and the one who was helping face plant, uh, go ahead and head themselves upstairs to try to get to the speaker's room. Taking Zalvana uh, with them. Taking taking me with them. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Yeah, Sounds right? like a party. <laughs> <laughs> they carry her on a palanquin. No, all right. So, <laughs> uh, so uh, as they go ahead and head up the stairs to the speaker's room, uh, Flynn, you see that the Durgar is sitting there, and he has sworn at you in what you can only assume to be under common. <laughs> it, was, it was very brisk. But uh, he's he's there, clear as day. What do you wish to do? Um, I'm just gonna turn to uh, Feral and Zavanna. Well, this one's still here. I figured if you know his buddies came back to, to finish the job, they would either broke him out or, or killed him to keep from spreading information. So, <laughs> I hear an echoing laughter. I don't like that. Vaslaka <laughs> da. Like, Watch you, your mouth. You're gonna stop, or I'm gonna make you stop. So, uh, Fariel, do you, do you, what is his name? <laughs> so, Fariel, as you are familiar with uh, Undercommon, uh, he says very clearly that Sunblight will return and all of you will die. Spit. <laughs> you seem pretty confident. <laughs> Oh, rest assured, my friends will come for Klaska. Do you think you're that important? Oh, they'll come. They'll come. <laughs> he seems to think his friends will come for him. He also said the sunblight will return and we'll all die. Great. Um, you don't think the Sunblight's the one who stabbed the speaker, do you? I mean, I kind of agree with Flynn. If they were going to get him, they stabbed the speaker and then just split and left him here? That doesn't really make sense. Yeah, touche. Hmm. Uh, so let's go and, and uh, figure out what's going on with the speaker. Hey, 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 you you two, down there. Hmm. Yes? Uh yeah, watch, watch the cell. And uh, while well, the first one sort of, uh, the first guard in front kind of get a little taken aback, like, who, who are you to tell the supervisor who had come in and said, it's, it's them, you idiots. He's just like, something going on? He um, anticipates that his allies will break him out, so I suggest you keep a close eye out. Oh, God. All right, you, you sit yourself, no, stand yourself in front of that cell and do not move. All right, we'll, we'll keep an eye on him. And remember, they can be invisible, so please keep a sharp eye. Like, get some sand down here or something to, like, something. see footprints coming in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God, Frostmaid's tit. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll do what we can. <laughs> All right. So, uh, as the three of you now head yourselves back up to the speakers, this uh, guard is going to go ahead and plant himself in front of the door. And we go back up to... Uh, Speaker, professor, well, I'll say, we'll go back to the speaker's room. So, Herrick. Okay, so it's just me. And, in there. yeah, so Herrick is in there with Imdra. She's like, Where'd, where'd your friend go? Well, he's probably going to have a look at your uh, missing assassin. Will you stay here with her? She's okay. She can move. And then Imdra goes to like try to move away from Prudence. She's like, no, don't. She, you'll come back. 
those eyes, those horrible blue eyes. No, shh, shh, and she tries to calm her down, blue but then looks over at Herrick and just she kind of shrugs her shoulders. Xander, you're outside the door. At this point, the guards have made their way in. And she's like, uh, uh, the, we heard there was an attack. Is everyone all right? Uh, the, the speaker needs assistance. Right. Uh, what about you? Uh, uh, well, mo- maybe momentarily. Oh, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pop out uh, Tempest. Excellent. Now I have control. Ugh, where's my mouse? Can I think um, of any creature with blue eyes, like piercing yeah, blue eyes, or yes. do I think it could be a spell effect like a t- thermometer? Mm. Um, I think somebody termitergens. I'm gonna pop Tempest out and. And and telepath to her to, to look at the impact site from the 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 teleport right. and try try to follow the tracks and it, follow the tracks as as long as she can. Okay. And then come back and and tell me. Excellent. Okay. So um, Tempest goes out. She uh, Tempest talks. She talks to you, right? Like, she can telepath to me as long as she's with a, within a hundred feet. And then beyond that, we lose the telepath. But then when okay. she gets back, she can telepath me again. Okay. Excellent. So then she heads out. Uh, she sort of like circles the mark uh, that was made in the snow from the first impact. And then she whoosh, sails off. And, and then, start. and then I'm going to, I'm going to step back in and I'm going to tell the captain, uh, I, there was, there was a, a, an impact spot outside from where he, he, he must've misty stepped out. I've put my familiar on it and she's trying to track the footprints right now. <sighs> Magics. And she like smacks and, and like her best mammoth play like smacks everything off the desk and just seems to catters it across the room as Prudence sort of cowers a little bit in the corner. Captain, we're Sorry. not, we're not, we're not all of that ilk. No, but tell that to Cyril right there. It's the corpse of Cyril is still with the ice dagger sticking in his chest. Yeah, so floor. that's not melted though, yeah? I'm just no, going to look at it and... Yeah determine see if i can get anything from it without touching it i'm guessing if i touch it it will just start melting maybe maybe we should get the professor to to make a drawing of the uh of the, uh, can i holler down the hall professor absolutely professor all right we need, so, we need you so as you tuck your head out to go professor flynn is right there in your face as you go professor <laughs> <laughs> so uh flynn uh fariel Zavada and the professor. And so you, you all, Flynn, you get blasted in the face a little bit with, uh, with Xander. But um, uh, all of you are sort of starting to convene. Professor, do you make your way to the office? Yes. Yep. All right, so everyone convenes in the office. As you walk into the office, it is a grim sight. As Cyril Plan- Polin lies dead on the floor with a dagger of ice sticking out of his chest from where his heart would be. Uh, Prudence... Uh, Tark, uh, Prudence Tarkwald is in the upper corner next to uh, what appears to be a, some sort of animal cage, bird cage. Uh, she herself is like bleeding, and uh, Herrick has dressed her wounds. Um, I healed her. I can't yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. So it had, he- had healed her, but the shoulder of her of her outfit is still soaked in the blood of the wound that she had received. Uh, and Indra is trying to calm her down yet again. You see this poor woman in a state of just absolute broken like shook so uh all right you file into the room and xander the professor comes in um the uh take a drawing of this dagger but don't touch it the 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 similar one that herrick pulled out melted instantly so if you could take a drawing before we lose it that could be helpful for us Uh, would i be able to pull it out with prestidigitation no mage hand maybe or mage hand i mean well Let's uh, let's get the drawer in first. And I mean, yeah, so you you certainly can make the attempt to remove it, though. <laughs> like Her- as Herrick tells you, if he thinks if you touch it, it will disappear. I think even removing it, it might disintegrate. Mm. Okay. So let's get. All right. So, Professor, do you? Professor uh, do you... is very flustered. Yes, yes. I've 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 made a a, a terrible discovery. Um, yes. Uh. It part. Yes. Excuse me. I'll. I'll yes. And he just begins sketching and trying to. Imdra kind of focus shoves his, her way. His thoughts. She shoves her way through the party a little bit. It's like, what discovery? Is there something else? Uh, and then she kind of grabs the professor. She's like, "What's happening? Please remove your hands." She's got that like crazed look in her eyes. 
looks down at her hands, and releases you. Sorry. I... Is there something we should know? Not that I can discuss here. This... This is bigger than any of us ever suspected. Mm. Not until I know it's safe. All right. Imdra kind of turns and away. I'll continue sketching. All right. Imdra turns away from you and sort of looks out the window and sort of peers out in the town of East Haven. This is the most rattled any of you have seen the captain. From the window, can you see the spot where the assassin... Um... Misty Step 2. It, sh- it should be kind of right about in the line where Tempest is on the map now, the 30 so, feet out. So can you the, see it from there? Because if you can, I just want to point. Yeah, so the, point. so the town hall sort of sits up on a little bit. It's sort of like the the, the, the throne house of Rohan sort of sits mm-hmm. up on a little bit of a dais. So mm-hmm. it's a little higher up. And so as you peer down, you can see the imprint, though the constant falling snow has for sure already to obscure it. But for sure, you for clearly sure. But, see that like this is different from that. Now. But so I, I would like to, if I can, just point out to her that that, that right there is the, the, the little impression. That's where I suspect he, he teleported to. Mm. And then my familiar is, is trying to follow the footsteps. I told her to just follow them and then come back to me once she found something. Good. Good. Let me get some bloody answers for once. Buddy. Yes. Xander, please roll mm. me a perception check for Tempest. Ooh. I I certainly will. Extras, Tempest, Ooh. Perception. Oh, I was going <laughs> nice. to say you get advantage, 23. but it don't really matter. What, what was that, Herrick? I was going to say you oh, get advantage, true. but it don't matter. That's yeah. true. I mean, I, here, I'll do it again just to you be... You can do it again just to see if you get there. <laughs> oh, yeah, there it is. Oh, yeah, take the 20. Right. <laughs> so, with that, with that crit... 23 beautiful bird you uh it, it see so tempest sort of sees the scorchman had circled around the town and she was just like there's another similar distance away from the initial mark they appear to be heading north and she and say as, and then as she as she and then she, they appear to be heading north and as she starts to talk to you again she fades out as if she had gone out beyond her 100 foot range. So, so she she said there was another impact, another imprint. Yeah, another impact mark. All right, I will I I, mm, I will share that just because I'm trying to keep Imdra calm and 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 on our side. My my familiar says there was a, another another imprint, and she's following that. She said she she feels like that when it's heading north. So, info as we get it, but that's it's she's she's tracking the best she can. Amanda, did her. you see the tracks? Uh, I I haven't left the building. I just I stuck my head out to to see what I could see, and then I I put Tempest on it. But yeah, but I can but I can I can show you. So it, it, it uh, pardon me, part pardon pardon me. Um, <laughs> I I will if if Feriel wants to look. Um, yeah. I'll I'll show her. I'll kind of point out to her the the two spots, the the one that that I initially saw, then the one that Tempest uh, just showed me. And I'll tell her which one Tempest is tracking now. Mm. How far out are they? So the initial mark is 30 feet from the office. And then the next mark out beyond that, Tempest reported, was another 30 feet. So Oh, six. it's it, I see. So it's 30 feet. I, I thought you meant there was another one within 30 feet of the building. Like it's two 30 people. 30 feet. No. And then, no. Gotcha. No, it's gotcha. as if someone went <laughs> and like hopped oh. it. A We're double trying, to, ba- trying to get distance. Yeah. A double bamf. Yeah, if, mm-hmm. the, the double yeah. bamf, as it were. Um, classic. Okay, classic double bamf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so then I, I'll explain that to, to oh, One, two, bamf. Right. Um, I'm going to be checking cereal. Obviously, I'm not touching the ice knife. I'm just checking around for any symbols or anything. You know, like uh, if they're a follower of anything or... Look at on, on cereal. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, excellent. Actually, not uh, going through so, his pockets or anything like that, but I'm just checking for wounds, you know. All right. Well, excellent. Looking, so as you um, any... as you go through Cyril's pockets and uh, I said not a... checking the pockets, but okay. oh, 
Oh, so, so, I'm so sorry, Jade. You, you, that's just sort of par for the course for your characters. I apologize. All right, um, go ahead. So as you're not touching the knife no. and sort of giving a, a loose inspection of... Yeah, he's just looking around, um, looking like for an any... Damn investigation. <laughs> God damn it. Six. Okay, with the six, you're like... This is not Jake's. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's dead. <laughs> no, uh, see, so with a six, like, nothing seems to be, like, uh, uh, like there's no, like, uh, I am a follower of a demon written across yeah. his forehead or anything like that. Like, there just doesn't seem to be a, a reason, but... Huh. Um, so nothing seems to jump to your eyes. Okay. All right, anything else? Can I ask um, the captain why she threw <laughs> the ocarina at me if she didn't? Eh. Oh, I'm. So, I'm so, it was. Um, it was your prize for winning the um the competition. Oh, you festival. just you you just threw it at like the nick of time because we were no I know, had, getting attacked and no I I, had, I, had I meant to give it saw. to no I had meant to give it to you earlier and then I heard heard the scream and and. I remember Pruden saying something about it being a, some sort of magical something or other. So I, I figured it would be of use to you, and I, I don't know how to play the damn thing. So I, I, I tossed it to you, hoping that you could come and help, and then uh, I just I just don't understand what's happening to this town. And then she sort of looks at all of you with just these sort of like pleading eyes of someone who's just seen a lot of tragedy. You hear very softly in the corner, Prudence just weeping. Mm. And it's at that moment that we're going to go ahead and take our bio break. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Welcome back. Hello, friends. So this is Cold Hard Witch, of the lawful, stupid playthrough of the Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. Uh, by Dungeons and Dragons. So, when we last left our intrepid adventurers, they had just discovered that Prudence Tarkwald, the Speaker of East Haven, had been attacked. Her assistant, Cyril, had been murdered inside her apartment, uh, or inside her office, and just before that, the party had dispatched not one, not two, but three undead sources as they were attacked by both a ghost and two shadows in the main sort of uh, what would be considered the court of um, of the East Haven Town Hall. All is not well in the city of East Haven. The party is currently on the track of what appears to be a misty stepping miscreant. So... <laughs> <laughs> uh, will they catch him? Let's get back to the game. Uh, so, yeah, are you so already... I in the office, I've got the professor who is scribbling away the uh, the the frozen ice dagger that is buried in the chest of Cyril. Um, mm -hmm. Imdra has sort of uh, asked, like pleaded with you all to help her yet again as Prudence sort of sits in the corner of her room and weeps. Uh, and so I showed Fariel where the, the first uh, jump was and told her about the second, but I don't Excellent. know if, if she wants to venture or if we're just going to wait till Tippus comes back. How's your eyesight, Xander? It's, it's, it's good. I mean, I wear contacts, but you know. Who said it's that? Well, uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah, keep absolutely. I'm gonna, absolutely. I'm going to sneak out here and see if I can see anything. Just and so I will, I will I will attempt to do that DM, keep it as watchful an eye as I can and not right, let excellent. anyone pass me. So, Fariel, how far out are you going? I, I'm going to start by going to the first Misty Step spot. All right, so that's 30 feet away. And now that he has, now that Xander has pointed it out to you, you're like, oh, yeah, okay, clearly, like, some magics have occurred here. Um, you yourself. That, that first one is going to be about where Tempest is in that area. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I say. Uh, and then as you. Do you then continue on from there? I want to look to see if there's any footprints where they landed here. Mm, mm. Okay, excellent. Go ahead and roll me a survival check. Come on, Drow. Nice. 17. Okay. With a 17, uh, you see that there are, in fact, no 
uh, no footprints out from the circle itself, um, but it looks like upon the impact, uh, upon the initial impact, there was indeed a, a second circle on the outside of it again. So what, it, what appears to your drow-like eyes is that if someone had landed and then upon landing had then had another spell go off that had then again created sort of a, a the same effect, mm-hmm. as it were. The snow so, is displaced similarly. So the what you're saying is, is the spell is like dispersing the snow so there's not an actual like visible footprint. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. It looks very similar to like if someone had like thrown a water balloon and it went and sort of created gotcha, that gotcha. sort of like blast crate uh, that, that little crater where it was think a human sized water balloon and then uh, a similar uh, circle effect like on just past that so okay. it's right on top of each other uh, okay and then so tempest has flown toward the second spot is that right yeah so tempest has started to she's sort of flown out and she said that it like the the, the second spot was sort of traveling north now she didn't uh, Xander had passed along that it was to the north and that it was 30 feet from the spot, but in okay. terms of the exact gonna, location, yeah. You, you don't, I'm going to head need that to... direction and okay. see if I can find the next spot. Roll a survival check. Come on. Oh. Eight. Yeah, unfortunately, with an eight, you are, are you're, you're sort of uh, kind of getting turned around a little bit in the town proper as you're sort of like, okay, north. What is this? No, is it? And so, so while you're while you're very comfortable with finding your way in the dark, uh, sort of the way in which the town and the, the the houses are sort of packed together, and the way in which people have sort of tramped through various alleys and whatnot, it's making it very difficult for you to find the next impact crater. Is she uh, is she out of my vision at this point? Uh, thir- well, yes. So she's now walked into sort of the buildings as it. So if we go ahead. And I'm sorry. The, the map ends, so I just—I guess I'm not super no, sure. No, no, no. You're yeah, right. You're right. I was I'm, I'm going to go not. ahead and uh, so so everyone can sort of get a get a, a a bird's eye of what we're talking about here. So as we jump to the East Haven map, uh, with Town Hall here, and then all of you kind of know that North is this way. Um, so the first impact crater would have been. Are about, you are you pinging? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the first impact crater would have been about here. Uh, and then as Fariel sort of turns down this alleyway and starts to search out a little bit, you do lose sight of her uh, okay. in the next 30 feet as she is now among the buildings. Can I see okay. Tempest at all? Ooh, make a perception check. I'm just wondering if... What is what is Tempest coloring, uh, Xander? Is she a, a Snow White Oops. bird? Is she a... Bra- oh. oh, well, it was the same. Well, anyway. as I was going to say, I rolling. clicked the one that gives me disadvantage, but they rolled the same n- number. So with, a, with a 22, I don't know that it matters. Yeah, it, uh, you know, I honestly had not really thought about it. I, I will, I'll think about what her coloring is before the next Yeah, game. no, no, no worries. I was just sort of interesting. Um, but uh, yeah, so with a 22, you very clearly spot like, okay, bird, bird, tempest. As her like owl outline um, among the sky sort of uh, gives, uh, say you, you lock eyes on it, and as she sort of sails over, you can then sort of gather that she is headed uh, towards this direction here. So as you sort of keep eyeballs on her, go ahead and make your survival check with perception, uh, with advantage. Survival check with perception. <laughs> Roll to perceive your survival. Perceive your right. survival. Uh, that's nice. a 25. With a 25, you do find the second impact crater. So where the first one was right here, the second one is actually about right here inside this, uh, just uh, uh, just past these houses here in this sort of little courtyard. Okay, and then are there any footprints leading there are indeed. There are away fo- from there? There are footprints leading away. They are headed uh, t- sort of up this main thoroughfare here, and then they're sort of walking out this way if you're following them for a little bit. Okay, I just want to look at the footprints and um, kind of try to commit to memory, like, the size. Is there, like, can I make a judgment? Is this, like, you know, a halfling versus a goliath kind of thing? Like, can I get so, yeah. some, so what with can that, I glean with from? That, with that 25 survival check that you rolled, um, you are able to determine that it is a medium-sized creature that is wearing a heeled boot of some sort. Uh, so, and, and like, uh, and they appear to have a, a rather healthy stride. Uh, don't seem to have any sort of limp or uh, 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 
uh, seem to be have a very good gait to them. So. Uh, do they seem heavy? The depth. Oh, uh, so the the depths themselves. Um, uh, no more than a, a medium creature would be. So okay. they don't. The the creature itself doesn't seem o- overburdened. So I'll just kind of mentally note the direction that I see the footprints traveling in, um, and let Tempest kind of continue to follow. But I'm going to return to the group. I'm not going to like take off brilliant. on my own. Brilliant. And, buddy, I will need Tempest's uh, perception check, please. At advan- at advantage, I believe, because she's perceiving. Owls, they got them peepers. And they're all like, Weird. who? Let's, oh, there it goes. Keepers, creepers, oh, ooh. only a 15. It was on that 17, and then it rolled over to the three at the yeah, last yeah, yeah. second. Okay, so uh, with that last one, though, Tempest uh, having, having b- looking on the lookout for a misty step impact, she does not find a third one, and in fact is having difficulty figuring out just where the tracks go from there. So, okay. All right. Lovely. And that's, that's unfortunate, but but probably fortunate because I don't know that we're ready to be in another fight just yet. <laughs> I mean, if y'all want to keep poking the bear, go right ahead. High on victory, low on resources. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Matt Colville. Uh, so my good friend Buddy Taylor caught me wise to that, and uh, I thank him. All right. So, uh, oh, party of mine. <clears throat> do uh, so, Fariel. You return to yeah, the and I'll fill Next. um fill Xander in because he was kind of keeping an eye out. I'll Brilliant. Fill him so I'll go ahead myself. and return us to the town hall map, and as we find ourselves back in town hall proper, uh, and say you come back into the room, Prudence has clearly sort of uh, recovered herself a little bit more. She's on her feet, and uh, Imdra is sort of guarding by the window, uh, sort of. She, uh, because you're very perceptive, Fairly, you sort of you notice that she, that she is also sort of watching from the window to see who's approaching or who's coming towards the town hall from that side entrance. Um, and as it, I'm sorry, uh, is that door normally locked from the outside? Like, would I have noticed that because I've I've opened it a couple of times now? Yeah, it wasn't. Uh, so uh, East Haven Town Hall, uh, and it's sort of that that is like the employee entrance, as it were, but like. No one's really jonesing to get into the town hall uh, that much, unless you have to like, unless you're looking to register for a fishing license, or you want to check out the library, or, or assassinate someone. Yeah, or or assassinate someone. But uh, again, like it, it, most people have been using the the main entrance, and so uh, pe- the patrons of the library and like a- anyone trying to get down into the dungeon, there would be, of course, you know. Uh, the guards down there as well, and, and Imdra is, is a constant figure on the area, so they, they hadn't mm. thought to lock it, and now they're 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 paying that price. There oh. is a library here, though. Uh, are you asking that of uh, whoever is explaining the library? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So as uh, as as Xander sort of asks that, we'll transition that to. Uh, 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 yeah, so uh, Prudence is like, yes, uh, 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 people come in from that entrance often uh, to uh, apply for fishing licenses or, or uh, access to the records, uh, the employees, clerks, the like. like Cyril. Um, and uh, there is the library, of course, on the third floor. Um, it's where we, we don't, it's not much, to be honest, but uh, there is uh, books of uh, local region, history, the like. I'll... I'll need to inspect the library when we get a chance. Captain, uh, might, might I suggest either locking the side door or putting a, a, a guard there? I, I wouldn't do much to the front because you don't want the town to think that things are out of your control, but this, this side door could could be a problem. Done. All right. So, um, oh, God, we were on the way to talk to that damn Durgar. Um, was uh, Flynn? I heard you clattering down there. Was he? Was he? Was he still there? Yeah, he's still there. Um, and he's alive and angry. He said something about a a, a sunblight, right, Ferio? Yeah, yeah. Um, the sunblight will return and kill all of us. And also, he's expecting to be rescued. So you might want to. I did advise your guards downstairs to keep a watchful eye. Um, 
We do know that they can go invisible, and apparently we've got people popping in and out of walls, so... Right. So, they'll be back. Can I, can I... Can I... Some light is. Well, I was gonna say, can I roll a... Yeah, I was... A, 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 I have something in my notes, but I want to see if I remember that it, if... Buddy knows, but I want to see if Xander remembers that we took a note on it. Excellent. Go ahead and uh, roll a history check. I always think it's funny because I think of history as something a long time ago as opposed to something that happened like 30 hours ago. I got you. <laughs> well, so no, I, but you're, you're exactly right. But I want yeah. to I want to think of a short term memory. Yeah, right. A memory <laughs> check. Yeah. yeah. Right. Say, which, call it whatever you want. Memory, history. Yeah, right. Right. It's a 12. So, uh, 12. So, uh, the, it definitely earwigs you like sunblight. Sunblight, you, you, why, why do you know that? And like, you remember that the, Ooh. the Durgar on the ship had mentioned it before, but y you and y your own, you can't quite recall. Was it, was it some, like, was it somebody's name? Was it like a curse? Uh, I, I will say that then stream of conscious out loud. Um, okay. Uh, will that jog? Ho hopefully that will trigger somebody I'm else. Say, will that jog Reginald's memory? Because I think I've got it in my notes also. All right, uh, Reginald, make a history check at advantage. Yeah, yeah, I've got it in my notes. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody, everybody got it in their notes, huh? All right, you, you, you guys taking down notes? Yeah, okay, 15. Good. I do. I do. Look. Okay, it's with on my that, little scribbly sheet. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So with that fifteen, yes, you Me do too, recall. Look. See. Oh, sorry. sorry, that's a Chinese menu. Sorry. Oh, love it. Oh, oh, oh. That's so good. All right. So, uh, with that, uh, you can go ahead and uh, read your notes. Um, there was mention of the sun blight on the map that we had found on the Durger before. You're right. And uh, with... It was a location of one of the murders, possibly. Hmm. It there was there were there were red dots on Targos, Brinchander, and East Haven, and then there were also extra notes on the map about Sunblight and the Outpost. Do Which we still on Kelvin's con. Do we still have the map? Yeah, we have. Yeah, yeah. I have yeah, yeah, I was gonna say. I was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's yeah, like, let's let, can we unfold it on the desk? Wait, like, who's please in tell this me room right now. It's uh, Imdra. Ember, who has already seen it, and yeah. and dead, uh, dead Cyril. Okay. Uh, have we tried to pull out that dagger? And there's guards what? in here too, right? No one has attempted to pull it out. Oh yeah, and there's two guards in here. Uh, so are you are you guys looking to sort of pull that stuff out and start chit chatting? I want to try to remove that it. dagger. I'll do it. I'll pull yeah. out the dagger. But oh, I'll you pull it. out the dagger? No, I, I thought no. you guys were going to pull out the map and start. I thought we were going to do the yeah. dagger with mage hand. Well, I don't. I, yeah. I can. I can telepathically, uh, telekinetically lift it. Oh. Yeah. I just realized that I don't have mage hand. I thought I did, but I don't. So Imdra's gonna look at the guards and say, "You guard that side door, and you, no one comes in this office." And they sort of move out of the way, and one positions themselves outside the door, and the other one goes ahead and puts uh, themselves. Oh, also you get us a cup of tea. <laughs> so at that moment uh, Herrick realizes that there's nobody else in the room <laughs> oh, I, was talking, I was talking to the one that was leaving yeah, oh, right, right. <laughs> kind of looks back looks hey. at Herrick looks looks back and looks hmm. DM did you tell us where Cyril has been stabbed yes Cyril has been stabbed in the heart in the front in, yeah in the heart yes. in the front heart in, in the, the front yeah. heart, from, not, from the right. front, uh, say is from, the back uh, heart still okay? Yes. So, so that that thank jives God with, they didn't get his back heart. <laughs> that jives with the mo of the cold heart killer. It does indeed right. jive with the mo of the cold heart killer. Cause who remembers where the speaker was stabbed? In the shoulder. In the in shoulder. in the front room. No, in the back heart. Oh. <laughs> in the back, yeah. Which speaker, Waylon or Prudence here? Ooh, ooh, too soon, too soon. Aww. But uh, I say, uh, speaker Waylon, uh, where how he was found when he was mur uh, when how he was murdered when he was found stomach, wasn't it? Uh, he was stabbed in the back, I believe. Back heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, back. He was stabbed back in the back heart. heart. Um, but we also also determined that his icicle looked like it was placed there. Mm-hmm. 
after the fact. Yes. So, All right, so um, if no one else is pulling this dagger out, no, Professor don't touch is it. Reaching out. Okay, don't touch it. <laughs> I'm gonna um, so very unceremoniously, I'm gonna like, you know, like how when you like pull something up, it is like attached to something. You want like want to put like a foot down to brace it. So I've got like a foot in Cyril's armpit to like keep him from like lifting up. Okay, okay. <laughs> and I'm like, um, I've only done this once. Before, so <laughs> step on people's armpits. No, no, no. That's actually the common. Never mind. Okay. Um, <laughs> what you do on your personal time is yeah, weird. right. Huh? <laughs> I love how weird this gets with Flynn every time. It's just like, <laughs> yeah. I got a plan. Uh, I, I tried this once. It it didn't go well, but but no, I know what I but I know what I did wrong. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I like I reach out for like the dagger. Um. You know, try to like sense it between like the viscera and like the the the, the body part, so that way I'm just pulling out the dagger itself. Oh, okay, I yeah. see what you're doing. Oh, I can see it, and I'll place hand on his shoulder for guidance. Love it, love it. Uh, and I uh, attempt to, to lift the, the dagger out. Okay, okay. Uh, so using your telekinesis, uh, do you have to roll anything for that? Flint, uh, or, no, I can uh, move any object uh, or creatures by mind as an action, um, as long as it's willing. Um, brilliant. Roll me uh, just an... Uh, oh, give me an intelligence. <laughs> Aren't corpses automatically willing? <laughs> yeah, right? right? <laughs> uh, no, no, no. I, no I, so uh, just, just give me a... It's a, uh, it's a dangerous rabbit hole, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I wasn't even going to say anything. <laughs> Oh man! Uh, intelligence, okay. <laughs> so come on, you got psychic abilities. You all right? Oh, seventeen. <laughs> nice. So uh, with the seventeen, you sort of you're able to sort of steal your focus, and as you draw the dagger out, you see that it is indeed this sort of ice cold dirk, and you're able to hold it sort of in the air. But as as you're kind of holding it, it's still there. In, in the power of your mind as you're able to sort of sheath it, but it, you can feel it sort of pushing against this withdrawal as if it's starting to crack and fracture. Uh, Y'all better uh, get whatever you want from this because it's not going to hold long. I'm going to finish sketching the blade. I'm going to add that to the handle that I had done. I'm going to touch, touch the blade itself. I mean, if you do, isn't it just going to melt? It's melting anyway, I think. Yeah. Uh, there. I just want to see if it, there's anything to touch it. All right. Excellent. So, uh, uh, do you touch the blade? Yeah. Excellent. So, uh, as you touch the blade, Rodney, give me one more intelligence check. Oh, no. <laughs> you have got it. You've got guidance, remember? Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to use that guidance, too. So 12. Nice. Okay. So with exactly that, what you needed. so with that 12, it's <laughs> so like the, the, you, you see it sort of like it shifts almost as if it like splits in half. And as it splits in half, I need everybody. Uh, it looks like Xander, Herrick, Flynn, Fariel, and the professor to all make a dexterity saving throw at advantage. I knew it. Ooh, natural 20. Nice. Oh my god, I'm Nin 18. 19 for me. <laughs> An 8! <laughs> oh no. 25. But you're, oh, built, no. but you're built for decks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I rolled a, yeah. Not, <laughs> not anymore. He's built for intelligence now. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. Okay, so. Uh, He's the what? idea guy. Goodness. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, right? How is or the idea best? guy? Yeah. Wait. So how is the professor the dodgy one? And suddenly Flynn's like, you know what? The power of my mind. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, a minute. Have you seen Harry's role with a minus yeah. one? Or, yeah, but minus one, you still had an 18. <laughs> I was like, Man, I love it. Okay, so uh, Flynn, unfortunately, you fail this. Uh, as you, but in your efforts to sort of maintain the hold on the ice knife, you're able to save all your friends as they miraculously pull themselves back. And you take six cold damage as the ice knife shatters in front of you. 
Oh, oh that's exactly what I thought it was. I, I even DM'd. Does it does it kill prudence? <laughs> no, it does not. Prudence is no prudence is, is <laughs> nowhere near just... it. Oh, <laughs> poor prudence. Just <laughs> no, it just <laughs> does. It does five sad damage to Prudence. No. Oh. Right. So, so does this blade that just came out in all of the dodging, does it look like the one that Herrick pulled out of Prudence? Yes. So in the instant that Flynn was able to pull it out and then you see it, he had it suspended above it, it looked, uh, for those of you who are in here to see the first one, it looked exactly like it. So Herrick and Xander, you, you do notice that this this knife appears to be the same, or at least it did. Just like the one that was in the speaker, Prudence. Yeah, but that one didn't explode. True. Do you think uh, it didn't explode because she didn't die? Um, ice knife. Is that um, arcane or divine? Both. Roll an arcana check. Uh, 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 uh. Mm. While he's rolling that, now that the we're not looking at the knife, is there something that we could cover? Hey, nice. Uh, so with an 18, uh, you'll notice that an ice knife is a conjuration spell. Okay. Is there something that we could cover at least uh, Cyril's face with? Um, uh, you you. So Cyril did have like a sort of. Uh, oh, there. You know what? Um, uh, go ahead and if you just take a t uh, give me an investigation check around there. Oh, so, sorry, also you said conjuration, but is it um, divine or arcane conjuration? Because both divine and arcane can have conjuration. Ah, hmm. fifteen. It it doesn't say in terms of uh, whether it is uh, divine or arcane. Uh, uh, let me see if I saw my spell list. Is it let's see here. Level? It's say. Uh, with a 15 investigation, uh, you, so Xander, as sort of sort of peering around the place, you notice that like this room uh, looks very much like a closet. Uh, is the door shut? Uh, it is shut. Uh, is there is there something in this closet that we can? That we can cover Cyril with. Uh, Imdra sort of looks to uh, Prudence. She's like, uh, "Yes, yes, of course there is. Um, there, uh, yes, I, uh, there should be a, a cloak in there. Uh, there's also some uh, some cold weather gear in, in a chest. Uh, Why would they want Cyril dead anyway? Uh, I don't. I don't know. He he he, he popped into the room and." said you've made a big mistake and then stabbed Cyril he tried to he tried to protect me and and then as he tried to he came at me next and the ice was it was in his hand and it, then it wasn't and it, the dagger was coming down and, and Imdra just slammed him into the wall and, and next thing I knew I felt this pain explode in my arm and and I looked up and, and, and there was just this this mist this fog and, and then Imdra was standing over me and I, the, the burning in my arm. It was hot and it was cold. What is Cyril's job exactly? So you uh, all know that Cyril was uh, sort of Prudence's assistant. So Cyril took Prudence's job when Prudence moved up to speaker in place. So basically, uh, basically the assistant. Coming up the ladder. Yeah, assistant to the speaker. <laughs> assistant speaker. Assistant speaker. Assistant to the speaker. <laughs> So both Imdra and Prudence saw the attacker? Yes. And, and I'm not sure that the professor is caught up, but I will... Uh, I'm going to get the cloak and cover Cyril, and then I will explain to everyone about Misty, Misty, and then um, uh, yes. Tempest is trying to follow... And when you follow do that, I'll also chime in with what I discovered out there. Excellent. Excellent. Got it. D does the... The, the the description um, of of the boot that Ferial boot print seemed to match uh, Captain the the person that you saw. Yes, that, that uh, type of build. Uh, yes. Yeah. What did he look like? Uh, 
medium build uh, human uh, or looked appeared human uh, male uh, black hair po- black hair ponytail uh, he's uh, about uh, average height uh, I'd say somewhere between uh, five like five six six black feet hair. black hair did he have ponytail. a small dodgy beard N- uh, no no sell alcohol for a living what? Actually, wait. He kind of talked like this. No. Um, <laughs> uh, no. Uh, yeah. So, she, so go, goes on to describe the. Uh, but uh, one of the one the of the lower big, of his clothes. Uh, surprisingly bare. He, he seemed to just walk around, or uh, in uh, breeches, uh, uh, light shirt, uh, perhaps a was, vest. Of was, he, no, was, he, was, he, was he holding anything? Did he, did he say anything? Did he have an accent? I just saw the knife. I, I, I saw the knife and I, I moved. I slammed him into the wall. And as I turned, was there, anyone, my sword. Was, there, was there anyone with him? Did he, did he have any strange mannerisms? No, I mean, the man had a, a he had an ice knife in his hand. What, what strange details? Mannerism? I you need said, details. You said blue eyes, right? Yes, yes, and and Prudence, yes, yes, uh, piercing blue eyes. They almost seem to, to light up yes. with with. Oh, the anyone cold could do fire. that, and I'll do and the, I'll do the same thing. Cold weather gear. No, no. Uh huh. I'll cast thermaturgy and do my eyes the same. Anyone with a simple magic spell can do that. <gasps> and like Prudence, like visibly recoils from Herrick as Imdra sort of puts her hand on her sword and be like. Stop that. Oh, come on. Anyway, it's snowing outside. We should be following the tracks. A te- Tempest is, is attempting to follow the tracks. Um, attempting. Well, yes, I haven't spoken to her in a few minutes, so. I will I will see the speaker escorted to her house, and then I will post guards. And I'll, I'll, I'll double the guards here as well. Uh, I, I would ask your help, my friends. Again, I know I ask much of you. Uh, if you could either stay here, uh, knowing that they may come back to try to make another attempt on the speaker's life, or, or, or uh, tr- didn't seem interested in the Durgar, but if there is an attempt on him as well, uh, what do you know who cares? Of sunblight. <laughs> sunblight. Yes. Ah, uh, sunblight. I'll pull out the map. Oh, oh, and the, so Imdra's recognition. Oh, that was the you you pulled this off of the. It was on the boat. Of the ship, yes. yes. Um. Well, so these. So is she. So do you fold the map out? Can yeah. She, all right, and she looks. And so as we said before, these these ten dots are ten towns. And uh, say almost exactly. There's there's lonely wood there, Termalan. Uh but this one here, that's. That's on the mountain. Mm-hmm. That's Kelvin's car. Yes. Do you know anything of that region? There is no town on that mountain. DM, is that the one that says um, Sunblight? Yes. Mm-hmm. And Outpost is the other one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh yes, that one there. Oh, oh, I see. I, my, my notes were a little crazy on that. There's, there's the two dots on Kelvin's car, and one yeah. is sunlight. The yep. other is. So there are a total post. of yeah. twelve dots on the map. The ten yes. that Indra points out to you are the ten towns. The two that she points out are on the mountain, are not any town that she knows that she knows of. Well, naturally, we're going to help you, even though you didn't make me a cup of tea. Um, are we going? Um, if, if I may, I, I I would actually ask that you set up here for the night, uh, unless you, you wish to go elsewhere. I, 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 we can make you comfortable that there's, there's, uh, there's lodging, uh, up at the top, uh, the top floor has the library and then the library. Yes. Yeah. Top floor has the library and then the offices as well. Uh, you you can go ahead and uh, make your bunk down there for the evening. Or, uh, if you wish to sort of take use of. Well, I certainly wouldn't sleep near that damned statue, but uh, take use of the courtyard and. Uh, I've got something that could take care of that statue if you like. Can I no, I pull would recommend my, that we uh, all big take a keep <laughs> stay as far away from that statue as possible if we can. 
Yes, uh, the, the previous speaker, Waylon, uh, suggested the same. Oh, yes, yes, I'm, I'm so sorry. Uh, Why would you keep it if you knew it was dangerous? I it was a, a, a gift uh, given to us by a, a group of adventurers uh, a, a, a for a, a job well done. And we, uh, I, I personally think the thing is just hideous, but I will oh, smash no. it. Well, as the new speaker, uh, I think uh, I think Prudence should... Uh, it might find a, a more fitting home at the at the bottom of the lake. Oh, I, I, of, uh, I would not touch it for my life, but... Uh, if I mean, we can tie certainly... ropes around it or something. No, don't touch it. Of course, of course. Well, then uh, that'll be a problem. To do, and I'm just like, that will be a problem to deal with for another day. Right now, speaker, you're tired. You need some rest. See you to your house, and then I'll post guards outside the front. Uh, friends, if you yourselves will will stay here for the evening, or do we have to get our own tea? Yeah. There are uh, there is a, a kitchen with uh, some snacks up on the second floor, if you wish. So that's a yes. Okay. Um, is will will there be a moment like while she's getting the speaker ready and stuff where I can steal Imdra? away maybe even Imdra and uh, as they're exiting is there a point where I could have Imdra and maybe even Feriel uh, just the three of us yeah yeah I, I think so so party members what are you uh what, what are you what, what are we thinking to do here as we move into this evening as much as I would like to uh find a safe place I can't I, I need to investigate that library so if they're yeah. willing if they're willing to uh let us stay here. I think if we are on our guard and don't relax too much, that we might be best off staying right here. I'll yeah, go I'm... make some dinner and then I'm going to come back and smash that. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I could just run into it. You see how good it was at that. <laughs> I would not touch it if I were you. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not going to say it. where where Flynn has plans. <laughs> also has plans. It's, no, he has one plan. It Sometimes they're a real no-brainer. <laughs> all right. Uh, so, uh, bunkering down here for the night. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Lovely. All right. I will Long heal anyone stuff. that needs healing. Um, right. Even lay some more wounds. Uh, so, Imdra's gonna move out. Uh, she's gonna go ahead. Uh, so, as, as so as Imdra's gonna take Prudence uh, out, but as she's sort of getting the guards ready and uh, providing her with uh, an escort, uh, Flynn or not Flynn, Xander, you do find a moment to uh, for for just the three of us. For just yeah yeah, if, if you if you let uh, Fariel in on that little powwow. Yeah, I'll I'll I'll, right. I'll give Fariel the eye. Um, uh, uh, just for the people at home, what does that eye look like? That's good. That's good. Yeah. That's... <laughs> With a passive of 16, I see that and I'm like, oh, <laughs> stupid elves. <laughs> mm. Typical elves. Uh, I, I, I ignore that. Um, uh, go make yourself some tea, Herrick. Yes, I, I, I'll make us some tea, yes. I'll have a cup of as well. Thank All you. the little clerics want to sip their tea. All right. <laughs> Love it. Um, you always complain when anyone else makes it anyway. I'm going to put true. some laxative in yours. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure he, who he was talking to, but that's not going to be good. Aww. Um, uh, Captain, if um, the 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 attack on on Speaker Whalen seemed like a copycat, but this seems like the real thing. If this man can misty step in and out, he's he's not to be under underestimated. So if you're if you're leaving guard with Speaker Prudence outside of her house may not be the best it may be that someone needs to be closer to her you know maybe she can sleep in the in the front room on the couch and a guard can stay in there with her but you could put two cards outside and if he can st step in and step out she could be dead and no one would know rest assured i will not leave her side he matches the description of a gentleman who has been in every town that one of these murders has taken place and that person was not traveling alone. Who is he traveling with? They run a team of sled dogs between towns. 
I don't know if you've heard of Torga. Torgs. Yeah, the, the the traveling the traveling company. Yes, yes, they uh they they run all through ten towns. I, I mean, Torga Torga Ice Vein's a is a tough customer, but yeah. We were told, uh, uh, gosh, before we got to Bryn Shander by a couple of dwarves that they suspected that Torgs and Torga Icevein <laughs> were involved in that. So, and again, if it's someone you know, maybe keep keep eyes on them as well. I say they were they were in town not too long ago, but I I had thought they'd left uh, heading north. But the description you gave matches the description of her traveling companion. Sephic. I see. All right, then. Well, you've given they, me... A, my, my men now know what to look for, and rest assured, they will be vigilant. The uh, the, the final thing on, on stepping in and out, just make sure doors, doors and windows are shut. You shouldn't be able to step somewhere that you cannot see, but, again, you shouldn't be able to leave ice daggers that explode and melt either, so... Is there a... She kind of looks at you, Xander, really hushed. Is there any sort of protection I might be able to to buy or or acquire for the speaker? Let me think on that, and 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 I'll let you know tomorrow. There's nothing at the moment I can think of, but but tomorrow I will. Tomorrow may be too late. Uh, forget it. Forget I said anything. Uh, thank you for your advice and your counsel. Uh, do you need anything else for the for the town hall? Or? Uh, no, I, I would say if you're going to leave us here, maybe lock the doors so that mm. the side door and the front door, so that someone has to make a hell of a ruckus to get in. Indeed, I'll uh, I'll post guards at the front door and the side door, which are the the two uh, the only two entrances in, provided your opponent needs to use doors. So uh, take care of yourselves. If the speaker doesn't feel comfortable being home on her own. She could always stay here as well. Uh, no, having had her attacked here, I, I, I would like to not have her here uh, should another attack ensue. Plus, uh, I doubt very much that they would know where she lived, where she works, is a little easier to suss out. What if True. we stayed at the speaker's place? I would have you here. Wait in case they come back. I trust myself and my men to take care of Prudence. I... Can I inside to be her? To be frank, this is two speakers that's been stabbed on your watch in as many days. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> is, is there a way that I could have shut him up when he said, <laughs> when he said well, no, wait, no, wait. This was just the three of us. You yeah, said that's that true. Yeah, just oh, the yeah. three of us. All right, so, okay. So, so Flynn, unless so you... Uh, I don't have to attack my own party member. Yeah, Can all right. I... <laughs> pee, pee, pee. <laughs> Can I inside check her, though? Um... Just her seeming like she wants protection for the speaker, but then doesn't want the speaker to stay with us. Like, if mm. go ahead and make an insight like check. A little weird. Yeah. No. No. Absolutely. Make that. Make that insight check. Oh, that's a nat twenty for twenty. So, give me all your secrets. <laughs> so, uh, as you nice critical <laughs> with that insight. So, uh, as you as you do this, you you kind of see you see Imdra sort of like like the, the look in her eyes as she asked Xander for a magic talisman or spell or something of the sort knowing just how vehemently she opposes magic and magic users that was her going to an extreme to protect someone and and it almost it was a betrayal of who she was for someone that she cares a lot about. And as Xander... Uh, I'm sorry. So as, as as Xander, as she sort of retracted it when he was like, I, I, I'll need time for until tomorrow, she sort of uh, immediately sort of com like regained her composure. And then as, as you were sort of impl implying, well, why not have her stay with us? And she's, uh, she, she then looks at you and says, if anything happened to her, I would never forgive myself. And you see in her eyes the look of a woman who would do anything to protect someone she loved. Hey, Xander, don't you have a spell that you use to 
just up your defenses a little bit? Is that something you could do to someone else? Uh, absolutely. I, 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 yeah, sure. I can, I can, uh, I can do that. So yes, Captain, I guess there is something I can do. I, in all of just thinking of everything, I've just, I guess I just have forgotten myself. That's good. Um, and so I will, uh, I, I will, I will, I will, I actually will hold my hand out for it. Is 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 for the the captain to touch? And she like reaches in to uh, get like money. No, 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 no. This is this is this is for you, and I will also protect the speaker. And as when she touches my hand, I will cast mage armor on her. Oh, very nice. Um, which is uh, thirteen plus uh, AC thirteen plus her dex mod. Okay. Uh, oh, is she wearing armor? She can't. She is wearing armor. Yes. That's all right. She, she, so she won't be able to benefit from it, but she at least will get kind of the warm, fuzzy feeling when I do it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. I say that the placebo then, effect of mage armor. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to think her her AC is higher than that anyway. If she's wearing armor, so. Yep. Yeah. Um, no, she's a. But it'll help the speaker. I'm sure. It but, might, um, it might help the speaker. What's that? It might help the speaker. Uh, but then I will, uh, if if Prudence is nearby still, I will uh, I will cast Mage Armor on her as well. Yeah, so I, I imagine you're sort of having this conversation in the hallway uh, out here with Imdra, and so she can then sort of uh, motions to Prudence to come over. Prudence will then come over, and she's like, "What is it?" And uh, I'll I'll extend my hand as though I'm shaking your hand. Is it just um... S- Speaker? We 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 will do everything that we can do, and I'll 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 take your hand in a shake. Nice. And I will yeah. cast I will cast mage armor on her. Be be safe. Be well. We will see you tomorrow. Nice. And as she, she sort of she she feels magically bolstered by this. Um, mm. So as she, I feel she, like I can take on the world now. Let's yeah, go. Yeah. So as she as she then as she then turns back to her guards, Imdra sort of looks both at you, Xander, and Fariel, and you see the most like sincere like. And then she nods, and uh, and then you see the, the the group of them start to walk off uh, into the town. Uh, and you, my friends, are now uh, the keepers of the town hall. Yeah, we're dead by the morning. We're taking over the town, guys. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hey, so uh, is there a is there a couch that I see on this in this little? Yes. So uh, we, can, we can there. we can take this time to sort of go through this this wondrous little town here. Is is there a better place we can put Cyril's body? Uh, in the closet. Like it, in the closet is <laughs> fine. You, you, I mean, you could Stop put him in the, in the chest. In the closet. So so as so you've got so you've got the speaker's room here. Uh, this right here is a, a water closet. Uh, what, what, is, what, what is this room here? Uh, there's, there's so this room here, it, that, uh, so that room is the that's the, that's the closet. That's she the, said there was uh, cold weather gear in the chest. Is yes. what Indra said. Yeah, there is cold weather gear in the chest. Should anyone wish to take a spare pair or maybe a dry pair? Um, so I think everyone's dried off at this point. Uh, this the, this room here is chair storage. So uh, when they would have like town halls and various and sundry court hold, like it's just it's the it's your stereotypical stacks o chairs mm-hmm. and then uh, and then the next room the room next to that is uh going to be records room uh those those these two shelves here seem to be holding all the records for the towns of who owns what and various and sundry claims that you know people would need to have for such a town as east haven is so is there room in the chair storage room that we could lay Cyril in in repose. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We could like we could, not could. like set up in a chair, but it's the, the room that we could do. <laughs> Just it. prop him up. <laughs> yeah, some we can sunglasses. Get like, that, get him like, yes. 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 Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Can we have a weekend at Bernie's character that just follows us? <laughs> no. <laughs> Look, no. I've already done three kobolds in a trench coat. Like, that, <laughs> I feel I feel like I've given plenty of zany, and so uh, I'll draw the line at uh, weekends at Bernie's. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, I don't think you drew the line. I think you opened the door. Oh, yeah. there it is. There it is. So tell you what, we'll we'll turn we'll we'll turn chair if, storage into cold storage. Then. If oh, we gosh. if we wish, I could perform some oh, some God. basic funeral uh funeral rites for Cyril that would oh. have some 
minor what? protection abilities. I apologize, Professor, for misjudging you. I thought for sure we were about to get like a, if you want, we could do some really weird stuff. <laughs> I, with could resurrect them. Them. I got no. some necromancy that uh, it's going to be nope. so bad. That's what I this thought is that he's going to raise Cyril. Genuine it. As as our our zombie pet. Yeah, no, but uh, After but no. All, uh, uh, say no, having I, having had somebody killed by an ice knife and not really knowing the cost of such a thing, yeah, it might not be it might be a terrible idea to maybe. Yeah, I can perform a f funeral rite for him. Excellent. All right. So, um, are the rest of you exploring, staying down on the main floor? Uh, I'm to you. Tom, I'm explore. Upstairs. Explore! I'm, I'm assuming this is upstairs. This like yes. So so we've got sort of in order here from left to right. You've got the first floor, then the second floor, and then uh, third floor, and then at the bottom is the uh, is the dungeon. Dur. Um, the dungeon is only accessible from the first floor, um, and then the second floor. As you sort of look at the next map over. You see that this, uh, so this is open to the court below, this sort of back courtyard area, but this stair in the corner of the first floor mm -hmm. leads up to this sort of walkway, which comes all the way across. It looks like this crane here uh, was used, was what was used to actually get the statue into position, uh. weirdly enough. Um, and then if you walk through to this room here, uh, that room is... Break room. Yeah, right, break room. Uh, so. The layout of this place drives me nuts. Oh, yeah, no, it's <laughs> doors that don't go anywhere. It's a little bonkers. So that room is actually. They were having a sale on doors that day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that room <laughs> is. Yeah, it's just and like, like where you set. would really want and need a door, there's not one. Yeah. It's the, that uh, room. Are is... you talking about these here, Nate? Because. No. The, the... Like, yeah. that'd be how you get stuff from outside the inn. Exactly. It's so this yes, room. but, like, I'm talking about, like, why is there no door right there? And on the first floor, like, there's no... There's well, no real way... He got a point. That's actually super true. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. So, like, in and order like, to get... Like, so if you come through the main doors of the first floor, then there's, like, this door over here, which keeps you on the first floor... Yes. Otherwise, you have to go up the stairs to the second floor. And then, then back down. Which then gives you access to, this is the, so this room here is the courtroom. Uh, basically where you hear like a small claims court. This is the fishing license uh, bureau. This here is the special events room uh, used for visiting dignitaries. And also if anybody wants to have like a birthday party. Uh, and then back here, uh, towards the back of the second floor, is the, sort of the employee's lounge. Uh, it's got some snacks. Uh, this is where Herrick can make his tea. Um, but this is also make where all of us tea, all of us tea. So this this lounge area uh, and it also then leads back to uh, or actually I should say up to the third floor at the top of which over here is the library. And then uh, basically off of this room here in the library, if as you walk back, if you walk back, there are several reading rooms, essentially that you, the town people can either rent out or uh, there's also some office space that people have uh, rented out as well for sort of their, this is my you know, <laughs> my uh, ice insurance startup business that I have an office in the town hall. So, Perfect. great. Well, I mean, if, if the, as a, as a spell slinger myself, if the professor's interested in the library, I'm also interested in the library, so. Yes, yes, I would imagine so. So friends, where do you go uh, for this evening? Library. Um, all right, excellent. Actually, so, I'm going to spend the next hour and 10 minutes doing a little funeral rite for Cyril. Excellent. To make sure he doesn't get resurrected as undead in the middle of the night. I love that. Yes. Always, always a wise choice to make sure the dead stay dead. Making <laughs> food. If we've got any food, I will make it. Lovely. We, need, we have the mushrooms that we found in the uh, yeah. cold yes. we need to. Yes. We need to get together, Ryan, and do something up for that cooking stuff oh man no i've uh yeah, yeah. no I've, I've been looking at some things and uh we'll we'll chat before next game so you, you gotta herrick is becoming really really good at cooking and so i, I want to make sure that he actually has a, a benefit to doing that i know there's a because, feat for it now but because oh, there is actually a feat for it now but i think yeah. we can sort of cherry pick that and maybe heroes feast a little bit but yeah. um 
All right. So Herrick moves up. I imagine Herrick is going to move up to the second floor to yes. sort of be in that lounge for the cooking area. Professor I, and Xander are going to the library on the third floor. Yeah. How long does your funeral rites take? It takes an hour and ten minutes. Lovely. So I'm going to go. After I'm going to go. That hour, I'll be in the library. I'm going to go ahead and go up to the library. <laughs> I'll meet you up there. I'll see yeah. you up there. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, and then Zolvana. I'm going to go find the couch on the second floor. <laughs> and in the fish licensing department. Uh, yep. <laughs> so I'm going to say. And uh, hang out there. Yeah. I say you, you, have a sneak, you have a sneaking suspicion that the person who runs the fish licensing is just goes up here and takes naps a lot. Yep. Yep. It hasn't and been a I'm lot of fishing. Like, so is that is that a is that a couch? No, it's actually like a desk that's got like maps on it. If you kind of zoom <laughs> oh, in a little bit, it but, looks like a couch. But I like that she's just sleeping on a desk with maps on it. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. I just roll them up a little bit. The pillows. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, it's no, fine. It's, it's a and pine then, place to sleep. Yeah, uh, got to spruce it up a little bit. All right. Yeah, either that or I could go sleep on the chairs. Just put them next to each other. I don't know. What yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh. Flynn, Fariel, what are you doing? Um, I'm gonna go. Well, first, uh, uh, I'm planning on heading to the dungeon to talk to that uh, the the captain guard that's still down there. Yeah, okay. Um, but on my way down, I'm gonna uh go to the professor as he's mm -hmm. doing his rights. Um. Okay, so you said you're going to the library. Yes. Uh, can you look up something for me? <laughs> yes. I got, a, I got a book report too. <laughs> what do you need? Um. So, uh, well, I'm doing things now, and I've noticed. Yeah. Um, if you could, if you could look up, I guess, psionic powers or something like akin to that. Uh, Are we alone right now? Uh, so is uh, the prof uh yes if so if Flynn's in the cold storage chair storage with uh, Cyril and yourself, you guys are alone right now. You think you're alone now. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be anyone. Well, Whatever. I was going to broach this subject later this evening, but as you're here now, I'll address it now. Uh, and the professor will stand to his full height, uh, tap, the, uh, tap his club to his... Uh, Dark Shard Amulet. Love it. And... Flindor Flinger! <laughs> he's gonna cast Shillelagh, so he's standing there with this uh, glowing club in his hand. God, I love it. And, uh... So who are you working for? Whoever pays the most. <laughs> who has... paid you recently? Uh, Garn, uh, because this, well, I guess the lady here has. Listen, you've slipped up and I know it. And you can tell your employers that I'm not going back. Look, man, I don't work undercover, all right? I don't, I don't do the work on the sly. Right? If I'm going to deal with you, I'll deal with you face to face. You're not a bounty on my list right now. Okay? I got paid by Garn. I came up here with all these other people. Right? We got into this mess together. So, I'm not I'm I'm not looking for whatever you are. I won't be a prisoner again. And so if if you are who you say you are, I then swear. we don't have a problem. Wait, why do you, what do you mean prisoner again? If they haven't come to you yet, they will. And I want to oh. know when they do. All right. And, and I'll go back to my little ceremony that I was performing. I <laughs> love it. All right. So, Fariel, what are you doing? Um, two things I want to do. I'm, I'm ignoring what just happened, but also <laughs> well, furiously was... writing down notes. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I want you to know, I thought that, that Nate was questioning the corpse, like, who do you work for? It's like, no. <laughs> is that your funeral rights? I'm going to bring him back, interrogate him, and then Flynn's going to kill him. Yeah. Mm. Oh, 
I love um, it. <laughs> okay. So um, I want to go into the records room. Excellent. Okay. So you, into the records room. And I just want to poke around. Ooh, you was you so know, sneaky. Just yeah. see if there's anything to be seen in yeah, there right, or right. discovered. No, I'm, I'm not mad about that at all. All right, so let's see here. The records room. Uh, go ahead and uh, roll an investigation. And then also, uh, Xander, go ahead and roll an investigation as well for the library. Can I do it at advantage since I'm there alone taking time? 21 <laughs> for me. Uh, 21. So uh, inside the records room, uh, there. So it's it, they're just sort oh. of haphazardly sort of shoved into box. Like you, you, you see, you see, uh, nine meter, uh, who is the current owner of the wet. Okay. And, uh, of the wet trout. And then you kind of look through and rifle through and you see, Oh, okay. The siphon owns the, the ferry and it was passed on to him by his former employer name scratched out. Okay. Interesting. Uh, you see that prudence, uh, came to the town from, it uh, looks like, uh, care, Dineval, Care Koenig, one of the cares. Uh, somebody has really crappy handwriting, and it, it did not grant. So she like she came from the north. Um, yeah, uh, but like in terms of like sort of like goings on around the town, you could like you could write a, a neat little book about what's happening around the, the burb, but uh, nothing jumps out as you as like ah ha ha. So okay. yeah, and then the other thing I want to do is I want to go up to the fishing license department. <laughs> and wake up you, Well, you see I didn't me know Zolana was going to be in here. Well, <laughs> yeah. but... I'm sprawled. I'm, I'm, I'm like literally just like playing my like lute guitar situation. So I don't care. Do what you want. <laughs> I want to forge myself a fishing license. Excellent. Uh, roll me... Uh, give me a sleight of hand roll, just because like you got to match sort of the the, the ver verbiage of a of a of a of an official license, and so yeah, like just you gotta get it. You gotta get it. Enough. We got a fisher. Oh my god! Yeah. yeah, you absolutely have a fishing license, and it also entitles you to a boat as well. So uh, yeah, you, you managed to uh, put a dinghy in your name. Nice. <laughs> Man, if I had a nickel for every time I did that. And, All right, and, so, I'm, and I'm watching her do this and, and like just playing along. It's great. Like accompaniment to her <laughs> forgery. Yeah, yeah I, I, that's, <laughs> that's what I imagine is that, it, you know, she's like playing along and that inspires Fariel to. Uh, yeah, just it. like my perfect handwriting, like my best forgery on this. I love it. I love it. Let's say put a little extra sauce on the signature. I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, Xander, roll me an investigation. I, I did. It's in the chat. It's a 21. Oh, lovely. Mine oh. was mine was just under Ferriel's first one. Good on you. Um, yeah. So you, uh, as you're kind of working through this area, you see that there is uh, books, lots and lots of books, some, you know, most of them are kind of dusty, though there is one that sort of jumps out at you, literally hits you in the face. No. Um, it, <laughs> it's that mimic. Yeah, it's right. Chelsea. Um, Chelsea's here. Yeah, I'm saying. <laughs> She's like, chill, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but as you sort of scroll through, uh, oh my God, what are, what are they called? Shelves. Um, mm -hmm. You see a red leather cover. Uh, that sort of pops out at you. Uh, and as you sort of pull it out, you see that the uh, the edges of the pages are stained with dried blood. Um, now, uh, like 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 spottily or or evenly done? Yeah. That's Which so, one? Uh, Which, so uh, spotty or evenly? Spotty, like kind of flecked a little bit. Hmm. Mm -hmm. What's mm -hmm. the what does the cover say about the book? Well, it suggests that the book is a, a poetry anthology. However, as you pick it up, the uh, it says, like, books to read by firelight and passion brave. And as you sort of look at it, the script fades and then sort of, like, burns up as if it's like a cinder. And, and you realize, uh, give me an arcana check. Um, I, mm, 
Shit, I burned my inspiration out my 66 earlier. Hey, we got, oh, I was going to say, we only got seven minutes left, so burn it if you got them. But, no, right. I, I burned it earlier. No worries. Oh, so, so with the 10, uh, clearly, there's magic afoot. So when it, when it cinders, does, does it still say songs to, or, or poems to read by the firelight? No, but you know uh, that you are holding in your hand a, a, a spell book. Uh, I'm going to open it and see if I can at least read kind of the, just thumb through real quick to see if I can see what spells are in it. If it's a wizard spell book or if it's a, a cleric spell book or... I guess clerics don't have spell books, but yeah, right. It's like cleric spell book. That that ain't no cleric. It's a that's right. a Bible. It's called a Bible. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, so I'll see if I can if I can read this the spells that are in it, at least the names of them. Nice, nice. Uh, so as you go through, you see that this um, this this is quite the book. Um, it appears to be. Um, uh, a tome from the Red Wizard. And from Asher, from which Red Wizard? I uh, say the one that uh, had burned at the stake, and this is a list Holy. of all the spells that you find in it. Snake balls! Holy cow! Yeah. Uh, which, of course, as you are a wizard, uh, well, I, th I think that just went to me. Did did that go to everybody? Uh, it no. went. Oh, did it go to everybody? No. Oh, well, oh, Nate, okay. Nate Nate said, uh, you know, holy moly. I was like, oh god, yeah. can he see this? Yeah, right. Mm, nope. No, but as you uh, as you're looking through it, you see uh, that it is quite an extensive spell list. Yeah. Ooh. I was um, reacting to what I imagined that spell with. Like, like, like. It was like the <laughs> anticipation. I know. I want it. I'm all a quiver. All right. I um, I'm gonna quickly stow that upon myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, you I, and I will dig into it later. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Lovely. All right then. Uh, so with the professor having working on his thing, uh, Herrick, why don't you, yes. uh, as 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 we sort of settle in for the night, why don't you go ahead and give me a roll for your uh, your your food? Okay. Uh, I did send I like you a to, DM, by the way, on Zoom. I did, I did, yeah, yeah. Uh, I would like to point out that we have split the party four ways now, so... Oh, absolutely. Im yeah. Imminent death is coming for all of us. Yeah, right. Uh, 22. I say that's... This is why we want to make sure that this last meal is really, really good. What? Oh, a 22. Man, yeah. man, freaking tastic. So, um, so yeah, with this... Uh, so with this little bit of cooking that you're doing for the, these these mushrooms that you found, um, you uh, you are able to go ahead and make a pretty fantastic dish. So uh, kind of pulling from the chef's feet uh, that is available in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, uh, you can cook special food, provided that you have ingredients and cooking utensils on hand, which, of course, you always do. Mm -hmm. You prepare enough of this food for a number of creatures equal to four plus your proficiency bonus, which is, I believe... Two. Six? Yeah, so six, six, six total, total, which yeah. means the party. Uh, at the end of a short rest, any creature who eats the food or spends more than one hit dice uh, regains hit points equal to an extra 1d8 hit points. So uh, what this will translate to for everybody else is uh, you're able to go ahead and recover 1d8 hit points. Have you lost any? Uh, are we looking to hunker down for a long rest? Or, uh, we're doing a long, long rest. rest yeah. long, long rest. rest. Long rest. <laughs> all right. All right. Excellent. So Excellent. does he like hit the, the triangle? <laughs> Trials on. And so then, draw us all together? Or? So then with that, uh, yeah. So he, he'll, uh, he'll start to holler once the food's done. Oh, but... no. Peter just gave us 300 bits and says, ambush the party in the night, please. <laughs> 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 or start someone with inspiration next session. I love it. Oh, Peter, you beautiful. But beautiful you know man. which one he prefers. Oh, no, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> but then also uh, with uh, with the work you'll be able to do, you'll uh, we'll have a little extra that you can do with that with that chef's ability. So that'll be a good one. Um, but yeah, so he, he'll he'll start to holler uh, out off the second floor The you know, soup's on. And uh, I, I saw the mm. professor making a, a dash for the uh, the, the library. Uh, well, as... I was on my way to the library, and then food cult was called. Yeah, right, so right. I changed so, course. Oh man, I was, I was hoping you and Xander would have a moment and be like, 
Oh, did you find anything in the library? Oh, no, no, no. Put, put, put them all on the books. table, and I'll, obviously I've got mine. I was say I was I was gonna talk to him. <laughs> Excellent. So uh, as we uh, sort of settle in for the night's meal and the uh, the the evening before us, would anyone uh, like to say a grace or, or any sort of? Well, he puts the five plates on the table or the bowls. He's got his in his hands, and he says. Uh, one of them's got a laxative and carry on. <laughs> <laughs> I think a oh dear lord is the closest we'll get to. There's, <laughs> there's one privy in this whole building and you put laxative and one okay. I own Yep. Yep. Oh, I mean to be I, fair I got a deception of three. Professor's <laughs> getting up there in age. Right. You might need it. So uh with that deception of, of three, you he he just means he added a little bit of pepper to it. That's just yeah. He might have put it in his own. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, oh, I don't know what that noise was. <laughs> it's barking spiders in here. Woo. All right. Uh, so, party, uh, as you'll uh, divide up into watches for the evening. Yes. Yes. All right. All right. So, yes. why, don't you, why don't you tell me who's who's taken? Uh, I need at least three watches. Um. If oh. by watches you mean I'm staying up all night reading in the library. Oh, all right. All right. Well, okay. So I, I wouldn't necessarily say that's alert, Professor, but all right. Well, I mean, if he wants to, to spend the whole night in the library, we can still, I think, set three guards downstairs. Yeah, absolutely. I, only need four I mean, hours. I can take a couple hours of okay. break okay. to go watch if I need to. So, in order for everyone to, so uh, during a long rest, a long rest is typically like, uh, it's like an eight hour period, but you, you only need to rest for six hours of it. And then you have essentially two hours to do what you will. That's if your character wants to take a long rest. Now, Nate professor can go ahead and take the rest of the whole evening to read in the library, but yeah. that will not grant him the benefit of a long rest. It will because of my warlock invocation. That's right, because you don't sleep. I do it's not just sleep. Disturbing. All yes. right, I love it. So, I kind of feel like that's going to end up driving him insane, but we'll get there. And he's I kind of feel like, like he's... a little weird. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, You're I don't know if wrong. any of y'all. I mean, none of y'all were Flynn in the closet, but um, uh, he, he uh, got attacked. <laughs> like, yeah, so... yeah. Are they? Are you guys okay? Like at dinner? Like, are there any weird vibes happening between you two? I'm cool. <clears throat> Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, you by looking at the professor, you wouldn't know anything happened. Yeah. Although, like the professor is on Flynn's radar now of like not wanting to go like be captured again. And he's yeah. like, so like in turn, he's like, okay, well now I got to make sure this motherfucker doesn't get captured again. I don't know what's going on with them, but okay. I can't let him get captured. <laughs> so he can't be captured. Also, I don't want to be alone in the room. With this again. Right. So I'll, I'll have Fariel take first watch. Uh, I'll take I'll take the second. I'll take yeah. yeah I'll, I'll, all, right, all right, all right, and I'll have. Uh, Xander I mean, take yeah, Fariel and Xander should always be two of the three watches since yeah. we're elves. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So, and Flynn, I'll you take, want to take third. Yeah, all I'll right. take third. Yeah, because um, I also want to talk to the guards um, on my watch. Uh, Brilliant. These yeah. Poor guards. Yeah. yeah. These <laughs> poor guards. Does anyone so want? Does anyone so want help on their watch alone with with the professor? Anyone? Any takers? <laughs> Come on, professor! <laughs> I'm right. also happy to do a watch. All right, all right, cool. Uh, yeah, and uh, so I've got Fariel taking first watch, Xander taking second, Flynn taking the third. So you will each sort of uh, <coughs> patrol for four hours and then wake up the next person who will then patrol for four hours. They'll wake up the next person who will then patrol for four hours, which should w more than cover the uh the the long rest and allow everyone to sort of get that full six um it would if anyone else wants to double up or like wake up during one of those shifts to help out with the watch as well you might Herrick offers, Herrick offers love, it. love it so herrick will also uh jump in and help out with one of the watches and that my friends as our party settles down for a long winter's nap uh is where we'll leave the game this evening seeing if they survive the night in the town hall so don't don't long rest our sheets is what you're saying uh yeah don't long rest just yet we'll start next game with you rolling for your watches copy great Ooh. good deal mm. and that my friends is going to be the end of cold hard witch for this evening oh. uh 